Fourteen. ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. At Jewelers Mutual, we're a little obsessed with jewelry. Obsessed like auctioneers with talking fast. Fifty, we're gonna hit so. Pop stars with auto tune. Yeah, 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 yeah. And dentists with asking questions. So, how did he propose? After they've put their hands in your mouth. What? Great. Yes, we've made jewelry our obsession for over 100 years. We love it so much we named our kids Ruby, Amber, and Opal. Venti soy latte for Opal. At Jewelers Mutual, we insure jewelry and only jewelry, which is why people who are also obsessed with jewelry trust us with theirs. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Welcome to Sporty, the show that gives you half-ass sports fans giving their half-ass opinions. And now, here are your hosts. Oh, the band is back together. Oh, I'm Chris. I'm Rich. I'm the Ice Man. Oh, and and the Greek freak just got paid. Well, as of the day we're recording this, uh. Yeah, we'll just a little bit of NBA talk right at the top here, and then we'll do, we'll just launch right into it. Uh, you know, you think he's worth it there, Ice? You're the NBA watcher of the group. Oh no, he's definitely from a standpoint of of where the uh, team is. He's definitely worth it. Uh, the Greek freak is definitely a power player, uh, definitely a superstar. On the same point, though, uh, I was watching the Four Letter Network and. There was a plethora of free agents this season, and I had mentioned it a few shows ago to watch the offseason and watch the trades. Well, now that the NBA preseason has started, the pool's kind of dried up. I mean, Houston went out and got Wall. Harden still isn't signed. That's about the only one left. Uh, the Greek freak got paid. Paul George is staying with L.A. Clippers. He just signed a big extension contract. Uh, but Harden, that's where this is uh, trying to be focused at. Yeah, Harden went to, what, Washington, right? Since last no, we Harden, met. Harden, no, Harden is still in Houston. Who the? F- he just hasn't signed a contract yet. Ah. Oh, no, that's right. Uh, Russell went to fucking Washington. That's right. Yep. Uh, did you see uh, the NBA... Uh, NBA execs all came out. There was an article in the Detroit Free Press that said, what the fuck are the Pistons doing? That was their yeah, grade on the Pistons offseason. There was eight professionals. Three said they had no idea what they were doing. Three were like, no, three said flat out that they had the worst offseason ever in the history of the NFL or <laughs> N- NBA. Uh, three said they didn't know what they are doing and two liked it. At least that's how it was being reported on the local sports talk station. And I'm just like, so... <clears throat> Yeah, everything's up in the air. There's no consensus. It's like me when I'm talking politics. If the people on the far left and the far right are pissed off and gnashing their teeth, I know I'm fucking close to the truth. So you got people that hate it and people that fucking love it and people that don't don't know what to think of it. Seems like high risk, high reward maneuver on the Pistons end. That's what is that's what it's coming off to me. I mean, you don't lightning doesn't strike with these moves and you don't start building a base to build on, then I don't know what the fuck you're doing with these moves. Well, but fortune tends to favor the bold. So they're building a base, but it's not a very strong base. They made a couple of good moves. They made a couple of what the fuck moves, and that's where the professionals, as you say, are getting confused. Uh, this is not the worst off season for the Pistons by a long shot. That being said, there was a lot of miss. Like I said, the free agent pool was huge, and. They they got a couple of them, and then they missed a few of them. Well, let's be honest, though. There could be a lot of gun shyness with people not knowing where the money's going to be coming from to pay these people next. I mean, it, it looks like the 2022 season's going to be fine, but 2021's still probably going to be sketchy as far as uh, liquid goes. Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, but, I mean, you have, you have players who I, there's no guarantee they're going to come back and play. We could be in the same situation that we were in 
when the NBA and the and NHL said, okay, we're going to come back, we're going to do the bubble thing, and players are just like, eh, I'm not going to risk it. I've made, I've made enough money where I can sit out for another six months, year, whatever. The question is, if they bow out now, because, I mean, let's be honest here, we just rolled out the vaccine. People are just starting to get it. According to the, 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 the experts that I've heard talk, they say between 70 and 75% of the U.S. population needs to get this vaccine for us to even <laughs> attempt to get to herd immunity. Yep. Um, so what happens if, if they start, you know, you have players that are like, no, nah. especially once the season starts and people say, and if people start getting sick, like they didn't, like, like what's happening in the NFL. First of all, NFL is just going to like, we're, we're marching on. We don't give a fuck. That is the baton death march. They are just fucking. We're we're playing. Period. They're we're making our the fucking money. Normandy. Come hell or high water, we're taking the beach. Dude, that's what I'm saying. This is the year. Like you could take that America's pastime bullshit about baseball and shove it up your ass. It's it's the NFL. Not not one hair was moved. I mean, I granted, you know, things were shifted around with the various situations with teens, but. Same schedule. They they fucked the preseason, but same schedule. So we're we're going into week fifteen. It, 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 yeah, and I, anyone who wants to, I'll I'll, I'll debate you all day about who, what America's pastime really is now. But the NBA, sorry. Well, what I'm saying is, what what happens if okay, you know, a couple weeks into the season, boom, there's an outbreak with the team, and players are like, you know what, it ain't worth it. So they walk. So at that point, the NBA has to decide, does that mean they're done for the year? Do we allow them to come back? The, you know, The NBA does have the softest athletes of the, of the four at this point in history. And yeah, that is a good question because, I mean, like the NFL, I mean, the, the NFL did no take backs this year. I'm sure there were a couple guys. There was uh, Damian Williams in Kansas City looking at you who were probably like, shit. Shouldn't have sat out. Uh, well, not only not only that, but I mean, they actually made plans. If you get COVID, we are going to change the IR rules just so you can go on COVID until you drop three fucking negative tests in a row. Then you can come back. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if there, if and I mean, I'll just be honest here. There's a wide, wide super highway of mistrust that runs right down the middle of black America when it comes to anything the government tells them. Yeah. Okay, I know that everyone likes to paint the shit now as like a bunch of fucking toothless hillbilly cousin fuckers from Arkansas and Alabama are the ones that are out there fucking, oh, the government's trying to get us. Okay, well... Ain't that different in the black community either. Oh, I've sorry. several news stories from legitimate news sources in the last week or so about the percentage of, uh, of black America that does not plan to get the vaccine. And it's, oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a little and higher I mean, than, than, than I'd like to think. And it's not, it's not only that, but there's the conspiracy theories that go along with it. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, you're not going to microchip me. We are talking about You're, the league that had a flat earther in it for a hot second. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, these are athletes. These are not fucking scientists. Yeah. You know, I know they like to think that, like, they're, oh, well, we're, we're so much more, you know, we're college educated. Really? Are you? Yeah. Really? Let's look the, at the, the list the of classes. Yeah, the keyboarding class and the uh, uh, intro to... Uh, Windows class you took while you're for your one year that you had to go to college before you could enter the draft. Did they really? You're, 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 so you're the same as the top epidemiologist in the fucking world now? I, I don't think so. You know what yeah, I'm saying? The basket like, weaver, the basket weaver clubs. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I think the you NBA's got to set their foot down with the bubble. Like, listen, they got to say, listen, fuckers, it worked. So this is this. We're doing this again, and hopefully, 2022, we don't have to do this shit. Here, here's the thing with the NBA and and just about all major league sports, and football did not fall into this, but the NBA is. It's going to quickly become n- nearing 
the NHL. With our culture today, with the social media and everything else that is going on, it's if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. So if you start fucking with the sport too much, and you know people start sitting out too much, people are going to forget they even exist. Yeah, I mean, look how ratings were. You know, I'm sure there's going to be all the asterisks in the world by it because of 2020, and they're allowed to put those asterisks there, I guess. But the fact remains that NBA ratings this year uh, tanked is being nice talking about it like that's yeah. like whew, there there are a lot of people who did not watch the nba in 2020 who watched it in 2019 well and, and that's just it and if they keep fucking around a lot of people aren't going to be interested in the nba i don't care who's on your team or where they're playing because so many times there was an nba game on and people are like they're still playing through this and you see what I'm saying? So you miss shit like the Warriors, the dynasty that was. You know, they they lost Clay Thompson. Uh, you miss the fact that, uh, you know, Mark Cuban's team is making a comeback. Huge. The guy has talent for European players like no other. I'll play the role of Iceman in this situation. Uh, don't forget the fact that they were also the league with the heaviest hand with the social justice this summer, and I'm sure that shy to that, you know, a lot of like, let's be honest, give the NFL, let, let's wait, hold on. Uh, give him his due! The NFL turned that shit down real quickly. It was loud for like the first week or two, and it's got like the other day I was watching a game and I saw like Black Lives Matter on somebody's helmet or in the end, or like it takes all of us or something in the end zone. I'm like, oh yeah, they're still doing that. Like they, like they, they made it known they were doing it the first couple of weeks and then just kind of went, all right, let, let's play football. The NBA kept banging that drum like the entire summer season or whatever the fuck you wanted to call it. And a lot of their, their guys were ex- exceptionally loud in the media. So I think a lot of that did, did shul a lot of people away from the game as well this year. And well, it's not, know, it's not only that, but you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say. It's not only that, but I mean, the NFL has had a few <sighs> questionable, is about the politest way I could put it, uh, people held up with the whole say their name campaign. Uh, you know, yeah, some of the names they put on the backs of the helmets have not been the, the, the you could have picked better names. You know, I, right now there's a, social media firestorm going on because NFL posted some guy today. Uh, people come out, we're like, wait a minute. You know, they're like, you know, hey, say his name, killed by the police. And they're like, wait a minute. This guy led the police on a over 100 mile per hour chase, was shooting out the window at him, wrecked his car, got out, and was running from the cops with a gun in his hand. What are they supposed to do, let him go? And of course, you know, here come all the usual... Oh, that's that's fake news. That's white. That's white supremacist bullshit. Uh, it, that was it. The because the, apparently there's video of him holding the the gun that he used to shoot at the cops and shooting out the window. He videotaped himself, like just driving and shooting. And of course, you know, who's shooting in the air? Uh, as someone who grew up in and around Detroit, New Year's Eve, yeah, you can shoot in the air, but what goes up must come down. Terminal velocity is like, what, 280 miles per hour? You want to get hit by a fucking bullet at 280 miles per hour? You know, there's this narrative. Gonna fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? And people called him on it. And it's like, you can't even call people on it now. That's not the way to go. Look, some people are just assholes. Some people fucking, you shoot at cops, you shoot at innocent bystanders, you put everybody's life at risk by doing 100 and having a bunch of cops chasing you. I don't have any sympathy for what happens to you when you get to the end of that fucking chase. Yeah, remember that idiot in Atlanta who uh, in the drive-thru who pulled out a cop's taser and shot it at the cop? And then, oh yeah, Wendy's. Yeah, and people are like, they burned down the wind. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you used a cop's weapon against him. What, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Put that down. But yeah, so would you stop shocking me, please? Yeah, what, what, what Rich is getting at is yeah, some of these causes the 
that uh, that were on some of the jerseys weren't exactly some of the best examples. Well, it's, well it, look, it, once again, it's not just that. It's not just that, but it's like when people call you out and provide evidence that this 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 this, this wasn't some twelve year old kid playing with a fucking you know uh, a teal and pink oversized obviously fake gun in a park and cops roll up and blow him away. He's a grown man leading cops on a hundred mile per hour plus chase, indiscriminately shooting out a wind out of, out his fucking window at the cops and whoever else is is around to catch a bullet. And when you get called on it, they double down on it. They pull a Trump. They go, you're racist. How? He's a criminal. What did you expect? If, and here's, here's what I get so tired of trying to explain to these people because they don't want to hear it. One, they don't care. And two, they don't want to hear it. But the real point is they don't care. Okay? They act like they care about, I, we want fairness. We want equality. You don't. Notice equality is not a word that gets used anymore. It's equity. Equity is code word for we want the same outcome as the best person who attempted this, but we don't want to put the work in. That's what equity is. You cannot guarantee an outcome. You take a chance, you throw your fucking hat in the ring, you join the fucking world, and you take your lumps. And believe me, there's a lot of billionaires who filed bankruptcy multiple times before they were billionaires. Oh, yeah? There's a lot of people who made it in the business world who had a lot of failure behind them before they ever fucking cashed their first fucking check due to the fucking sweat of their brow of any substance. So I, Bezos borrowed 50 grand from his in-laws to start Amazon. Oh, yeah. I, I'll put a little bow on this. Look, we were at the precipice of this as our show when we started talking about Colin Kaepernick. Okay. And we were all up in arms for years at this point about the guy. And Chris used to make fun of me. I don't like the guy and everything. It's not about the guy. Okay. Uh, it, look, when I watch sports, I've said this a hundred times. When I watch sports, I come to here to watch a team play. I'm here to watch the game. I'm here to get away from my world. Okay, people want bill money, people want food, people want smokes, whatever. There's so many fucking problems in my life, but for two and a half to three hours, I want to sit down and just encourage somebody else to do good. Okay, and I don't get it because now they want to sit there and practice their their right, their First Amendment free speech. I have to listen to watch, yeah, yeah, say their name, I, arms up, hands up, I can't breathe. Yada, yada, yada. That's where people get pissed. And you're right, Rich. There's those people that are like, well, then you're a racist. Yada, yada, yada. He wasn't shooting at a cop. He was shooting past him. It was the camera angle. I, I don't give a fuck if he shot him or not. Can he make a basket, please? I, that's all I give a shit about. Oh, shut up and dribble. Oh, boy. That, that's it. Shut up and dribble. You want to talk about the, your black issues or your white privilege? Do it on your own fucking time. This is my time. You're paid to play a game. Sit down and pay. Play. That's it. And you can't get that to anybody else. They want to use it as their launching platform. And here's the kicker. And we've said this a hundred times on this show. They don't even watch the fucking game. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of the noise is always come generally coming from people who aren't even fans. So this has been said numerous times. But here's the problem. And I just said it at the beginning of this show. You're going to become out of sight, out of mind. Everybody still thinks Nowinski is still playing in Dallas, and he isn't. He's replaced by two different fucking foreign players. Porzingis is no longer in New York. He's in Dallas, and he's healthy with a knee surgery. Nobody knew because he's out of sight, out of mind. Luca is huge in, in Dallas. Huge. The guy can ball. And he's a big motherfucker. Does anybody know who the center of the New Orleans Pelicans are? No. That's not fair because Zion Williams is now the longest tenured Pelican on that team. Right. Zion Williams is the center. No, no. He's the longest tenured Pelican on that team. He's right. just gotten the league, what, two years ago? This exactly. is the beginning of his second year. But everybody's forgot how badass he was in Kentucky and how badass he was supposed to be in, in New Orleans. Because they're out of sight, out of mind. Then he also you get injured. Me, you could tell me two people on the L.A. Lakers. 
After that, you have no idea because they're out of sight, out of mind. I mean, well, I, 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 forgive me my ignorance. I don't understand what the hell this has to do with what the fuck we're talking about. I, what does out of sight, out of mind have to do with the fact that we have you have the NBA starting back up and I, what's their that's, what's their COVID plan? As, what's their COVID what's, plan? Because they have to do it like the NFL. They have to bowl through. If you want to sit out, sit out. You get infected, go on IR. You have to be relevant. You have to be on TV playing all your freaking games. There it is. The point. Up like NHL. Took you a while, but there it is. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to say this. I, whatever fucking works and what it seems like works is what the NBA and the NHL did. You're not college students. You're not high school students. You're not a travel team. Okay, those... Those group, those people, I'll give fucking uh, set asides for. It's kind of hard to fucking exist in a bubble. But there are colleges and college football programs which have done that. By the way, I can't remember who it was, but it was one of the Big Ten teams. They just said, "We're done. We're done. We're tired. No, no, no one, no one on this team, from the coach to the water boy, has seen their family since July. We've all been living with each other, and that's about it for almost six fucking months now." We're not doing this shit anymore. And let's be honest, unless you're Ohio State, you ain't got a chance of doing shit coming out the Big Ten. I don't want to hear about fucking uh, the year Northwestern's having. Give me a fucking break. Anyone, it, seriously, either of you guys think any team's worth a shit coming out the Big Ten besides Ohio State? <laughs> no. no. Thank you. And the and, and discussion. I mean, Ohio State put up like almost 60 on MSU with like fucking their practice squad essentially did you see that fucking score i just have to bring this up because you brought for the arizona arizona state game no 70 to 7 who was, was it herm arizona state and, with the 70 hold on he's still yeah, the guy kansas there right state football kansas state football and uh a couple other schools said they will uh turn down any bide for uh a bowl if they get invited to a bowl game, they will turn it down. They're done. Oh, no. Yeah. Kansas yeah, State was... won't be in a bowl game. Oh, no. No, no, no. And along with a few other colleges as well. Arizona State hung 70 on them on, on the Arizona Wildcats. And they took their foot off the gas in the fourth quarter. They, they went from scoring three the touch- game. They, they went from scoring three touchdowns in the first, second, and third each ha. quarter. To only one in the seventh, so you know they put their backups in there. We're probably running the uh, ball like a motherfucker. They still what? They still got the ten. They still Herman. Ah, let's let's get ten. Go for going for twelve would just being an asshole. But no, look, the NBA's problem is it's a predominantly black league. You have, I, I know everyone thinks that like the average NBA fan is like you know some black guy sitting in. A highly de- or densely populated area, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But uh, no, there's a lot of fucking white people that like basketball. Take your ass to Indiana. They'll play basketball in the dirt driveway. Mm-hmm. Take your ass down south and get in and and play a drop-in game of barn ball. You think they play rough on the fucking courts in Brooklyn, in Coney Island? Go down there and play with them cornbread-eating motherfuckers. Go Is to Boston ain't... and New York. Are you kidding me? There ain't. Oh, fuck that. That's 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 too metropolitan. I'm showing you fucking some cornbread eating, drinking milk from the cows, tit country strong white motherfuckers. A lot of them are fans <laughs> for fucking the NBA. Period. End of oh, story. Yeah. And the NBA has decided we're going to take a stand. Okay. Well, like I've been hearing for the last ten years from the fucking so-called progressive left. Freedom of speech has consequences. You took a stand. Your consequences are you've chased off a good portion of your fan base. You are not entitled to that fan base. No one is entitled to to tune into your program. And I'm sorry, but who who in their right mind wants to tune in to an NBA game if you're fucking barely making above the poverty line, poor white person, living hand to mouth, no insurance, don't know where your next meal's coming from, if your paycheck gets fucked up, you're fucked up. They want to be sit there and told that you're the most horrible fucking thing to ever fucking come out of this fucking planet. 
And no matter what you do, you're a racist piece of shit. And then blah, 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 blah. All this critical race theory, BLM horse shit that they push. Why, why the fuck would you want to watch that? And the NBA is too fucking stupid because it's... Guys, the generations are now... They, they, we said, wait till they grow up and are in charge, are in charge now. And it doesn't matter, right or left. You're both a bunch of fucking sensitive as a dick tip after it bust its first nut. Snowflakes. Everybody... Even the fucking hardcore, I'm an individual right wing, MAGA motherfucker bullshit, sister fucking idiots are out there claiming vic victimhood status because why? We've taught entire generations is how you get shit done. So now you have an entire generation of people driving the NBA and the NFL with this bullshit. And here's the thing. You're not even guaranteed you're going to be able to fucking play. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if half a fucking NBA team comes down and tests positive for corona? You going to plug and play? You going to just going to grab six people from 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 where? The D League from overseas? Plug them in for 2 weeks and then send them back on their way? There's only what? 12 players on a fucking bench, right? Yeah. yeah. There's 53 fucking players in professional football and there's like over 100 in college football and they're having a, some some of those teams are having a hard time fielding a fucking competitive team. Um, you know, uh, Denver just lost all three of their quarterbacks two weeks ago. This is what I'm well, saying. That, that was, well, to be fair, that's because the NFL has tightened their protocols. Like, those three guys were, they were near somebody. Like, they didn't have it. They were near someone. So they had to drop the the new protocol in the NFL, at least since, like, I think Halloween has been. Uh, uh, if you are uh, close contact to somebody, basically, if you're near someone who's had it or near somebody who was near somebody who's had it, you have to now drop five COVID negative tests in a row. Like that, that like it's crazy, but that's, See, but that's what Denver found be, themselves in. It used to be when the season started, at least this is what I heard was, uh, if you test positive, you automatically go into isolation. And if you think it's a false positive, like Matthew Stafford had here in Detroit, they give you three tests over the next 24 hours. If you pass them all, then okay, fuck it. it was a false positive. Now, it, well, it, I'm sure that would, it, it, we're probably both right. I know the, the last month or so, they really tightened them. When, when it, essentially the country started spiking, the NFL went, oh, shit, and they, they, they tightened their protocols up. Oh, no, that, no, that's what I'm saying. Like at the beginning, well, it's just like at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, we're going to require people to wear masks. And you had coaches on the sideline pulling masks down, players meeting it in you know fifty yard line after the game, shaking hands, hugging, exchanging jerseys and shit. And the NFL was like, "No, now we're going to fine you a couple hundred thousand players and coaches." And still, you had coaches with their fucking wearing their diaper chin, fucking nowhere covering their face. Players fucking not observing social distancing between teams. So the NFL just came in and said, "You know what?" We'll take those draft picks then. Thank you. They're not fucking around. That's what I'm saying. Like the NBA, like, look, you already are in a, we're in, you're in a position where I, on paper, you have a captive audience. You've had a captive audience all this year. Like it literally, unless you lock us all up together in a prison situation, I don't understand how you get more of a captive audience than all entertainment has had a chance to get their cut of the pie from this year. And yet, what have they done? They've pissed away that opportunity. They fucking, yeah, hey, individual players want to speak up on what they feel is an injustice. Fine, go for it. A lot of, a lot of people hate individual players. I, there, guys, we all grew up in Detroit in the 90s. There was a lot of Red Wings on those 90s teams, especially before they won their first fucking cup in 40-some years, that were hated in this town. Chelios. Primo. Well, no, no, I'm talking. He won in the 90s. He wasn't on the Red Wing. I'm talking no, Keith Primo. No, no. I'm talking. Oh, yes. Definitely. How many fucking times when Osgood was in net did we hear bring Vernon in? When Vernon was in net, put Osgood in. It was, that was constant. Oh, that was I got constant. you. Constant. Wrong kind of fight. <laughs> Five all. You know, so I mean, it's like, look, I, they could have just been like, you're free to say whatever you want, just understand. If you go out and say some shit and you start losing sponsors or you start your jersey sales start dipping or you start getting booed on the court, 
you're not entitled to not have any of that happen to you. We're at the point where if you disagree with someone on, on, on social media, they will dox you and try to get you fired, evicted, divorced, ostracized, and fucking estranged from your family because they didn't like something you said online. Make your ass live under a bridge with a sign. That is no bullshit. So what the that fuck? Is terrible. What the fuck do these fucking prima donna overpaid pussies think they got a fucking right to spout off any shit they want with no fucking fit blowback from it? Hey, you want to you want to spout shit and get away with it? Sacrifice the check because then you're just a nobody with an opinion. Yeah. Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net. Yeah, sure, the players bring some skill to the game, but if I don't put them in my lineup, who cares? Not me. I'm Eric Rubino, fantasy baseball GM and league runner-up two of the last nine years. I use the progressive Name Your Price tool with options based on my budget. And for a guy that's used to being in control, it fits. Like this runner-up t-shirt. Champ gets a trophy, but you can't wear a trophy. Boom. Get options based on your budget with Progressive, even if you're not a legend in your own mind. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. And now a game of Commercial Chicken, brought to you by Progressive, where we see how long Flo can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. So the the weather is just all over the place lately, right? One day it's hot, and the next day it's, uh, it's, it's windy for a while. It's like, make up your mind already. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save big. Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net Sporty. Put your money where hey, your mouth quick, is, because literally. It fits, it, it's away from the NBA, but it fits where we're at. I just read that the MLB is now counting the Negro League as the major leagues, and it's going to fix the books. Good. Your thought. It should. It should. Because it's. I told my my beef with... With Babe Ruth, is he, he all his records are against white guys. And on top of that, I know Ty Cobb was not a good human being. He was a piece of shit. But for someone who supposedly like drowned and set black babies on fire every time he saw one, according to you know the legend that has grown, and you know he was basically the template for Hitler. You know, uh, he was all for fucking the Negro leagues and. And flat out said MLB needs to fucking take a lesson from the Negro, Negro leagues or they need to integrate because they have a better game than we do. Uh, they gonna, play the game the right way. It's going to put Josh Gibson in a lot more conversations now. You got damn right. Satchel Page, fucking uh, dude. Uh, I've looked up some of the numbers of some of the guys. I used to work with a, a, a chick who her sister-in-law her grandfather played for the Detroit Stars. And I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I looked him up. His numbers would have got him in the Hall of Fame if he played in, in, after Jackie Robinson, like as a Major League Baseball player. So, yeah, I don't give a fuck. All you're doing is acknowledging what they did and saying, yeah, this is, they've done it. Well, there was talk about doing it with uh, the Japanese leagues too, because if you count, all the hits Ichiro had in the Japanese league before he came here, he's an all-time hits leader, period, in baseball. And if you think the Japanese can't play any baseball, you've never watched any of the world baseball classics that, that used to happen. Because I believe they won two of them. 
They won the first one, that's for goddamn sure, in 2006. And that was the best in the world. That wasn't just the best the scouts could find and who you could afford to sign. That was the best in the fucking world. Just what Japan does, though, right? They just they they, they find one, once they're into something, that's it. They're done. They dominate. Like, good God, help us if they ever figure out football. But I don't have a. But I, it's, it's all baseball. Is it the MLB Hall of Fame or is it the Baseball Hall of Fame? Yeah. Now, if you want to have MLB records, the Negro League's records, the Japanese League's records, fine. But if we're talking baseball overall, to me, it's like it's like saying that the the, the American Football Conference and the, and the NFL, you know, the, the the AFL and the NFL, you know, didn't mean shit. Well, then why did they fucking why did they merge? Why did they play a Super Bowl? Why did they have two different conferences if it doesn't mean shit? Obviously, it meant shit. It meant shit enough to where you merged with them. You brought them into the fold. Me, mean shit now. You know? And that if, would if, never happen back then, though. Could you imagine MLB playing the Negro League? MLB they did. looked like a bunch of fucking retards. Earl, they did. Go back and, go back and watch uh, the, the, some of the early episodes of uh, Ken Burns Baseball. It, they call it barnstorm. They would basically take all-stars from MLB and all-stars from Negro Leagues and travel around and play exhibition games for people. And yeah, they were exhibition games. It's like stunt there's not baseball. A of, there's, there's not, a, there's not a, like a whole lot of you know 100% correct, willing to bet my life records that were kept on those games. But there's enough evidence around that, uh, yeah, those, the Negro Leagues were holding their own against an all-white MLB. And by the way, was MLB all, really all white? Because didn't they have like Latin players in t- on the teams before black players even? I seem to remember us talking about that with Todd, and Todd's like, that's something that just has gotten lost in the history books, and he doesn't, if I remember correctly, he was like, I don't understand why. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I get it. It's a big deal. First, you know, black player playing the N- MLB, blah, 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 blah. But if there were fucking players from Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Cuba playing before Jackie Robinson shouldn't their names be pretty much household names to baseball fans but I'm I'm on the fence I'm I'm glad that they finally acknowledged them but I think it should be MLB Negro Japanese League as far as stats and because I by the way I don't know I don't know the Japanese League I know it's not called that but whatever it's called I I just wanted to say that because we're sounding ignorant as fuck. Speak American over here. Half-ass sports fans, folks. Okay. Um, Just for the simple fact, that's what football did. It was two separate leagues, and like you said, they came together to play Super Bowl. But in the history, you have your, you know, one set of of stats for this league, one set of stats for that league. And and you could compare if you like, but they were separate until they did come together. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you look at the history of MLB and the Negro Leagues, yeah, it was a big deal when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, but it also was the beginning of the fucking end for the Negro Leagues. MLB wasn't going to join the Negro Leagues. It was always going to be the Negro Leagues were going to join the MLB. Basically, we'll take all your best players. I mean, think about it. When, 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 before, what you hear about the Negro Leagues is pretty much before and around the time of Jackie Robinson. I, they were done by what the sixties? At least the, the league I'm talking about with the Kansas City Monarchs and the Detroit Stars and everything. You know what I'm saying? Maybe even maybe even in the fifties they were done. That league folded. So I mean, in in a way, it's yeah. I mean, they did the MLB did the Negro Leagues what the NFL did to the USFL when it folded. We'll take your best players. Thank you. Yep. They just. They took the players that made the league fold, whereas the USFL folded, and then they took the players. Same result, though. I mean, it was – so – and like I said, it's the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's not the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Hey. You know? Now, Grant, I, I've never been there, but I'm sure if you go in there, I'm sure there's plenty about the Negro Leagues and about Japanese baseball leagues and baseball and how it spread across the globe and, and like, like it has. I mean – I. It has to. It has to be right. I mean, Jesus Christ! You go to you go to the fucking Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and there's a phone sitting there, and at any moment it could ring, and on the other end will be Yoko Ono. And believe me, I posted up next to it for 20 minutes, wishing that bitch would ring, because I was going to answer it and be like, "Bitch, you killed the Beatles." And <laughs> <her butt. laughs> 
Hey, well, while we're talking about baseball and being ignorant, uh, let's talk about the Cleveland baseball team. Is that going to be the name? We can't, we can't dead name them now? I, I don't know. Ra- All I know is Problem this. solved, everybody? The minute I heard that, I went online and I started looking for older Blackhawks jerseys. <laughs> that way I can get an older Blackhawks Probert jersey before. Because despite the fact that the Blackhawks the, the Black organization has went to the to Blackhawk Nation, had the, got their approval. Got their blessing, sure did. You know what's going to happen. A bunch of fucking whiny ass. And let's, let's just stop. Let's just stop. Let's just let's call it what it is. A bunch of whiny ass white women. Yep. Because that's who, that's where it always starts. And a bunch of rapey ass male fem, rapey ass white male femis, feminist. There's no such thing. There's just guys who fucking act like they care about you. So then they can sexually assault you. They're gonna join in because they got to go where the pussy goes. And then once they get the, they start beating that drum. Then everybody else joins in. People who had no dog in this fight. Never cared about the sport. Now all of a sudden I have an opinion and want, God damn it, even though I don't know what I'm talking about, I want it changed. Haven't even watched one game of hockey. <laughs> Absolutely. And what city are they in? Cleveland is not a fucking liberal stronghold. Chicago is. It's just a matter of time before the Blackhawks wave bye bye to probably, and this is a Red Wings fan, one of the best looking jerseys. In the NHL is the Blackhawks jersey. Braves are coming for you next. Atlanta Braves, tick tock. They're on the clock. See, the Braves can the Braves can kind of fucking the Braves can juke them if they want though, because the Braves could remove any reference to Native Americans. We're just talking about our brave baseball players and just put a, a I mean, baseball. If they, if they really want to fucking earn brownie points with the woke flakes, who should have been gate kept to the point where they never even got their toenail across the fucking line into these sports, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, they could just put a black baseball player in a Braves uniform. You know what I'm saying? Like have a have, instead instead of having like a Chief Wahoo or you know what I'm saying, like some uh, character of an Indian, have an actual portrait of a black baseball player, and there's your. There's your logo. Now we're just talking about our brave players because they're standing in there against 98 mile per hour fastballs. The you're so braves. The, the, the Atlanta stunning and braves. Yeah. But no, I like. I, I mean, it's coming. Every it's it's all guys. Everything. The seeds of this country's destruction have already been planted, took root, and we're reaping what's been sowed. And it always starts. In schools with children. And the minute, like 15, 20, 30 years ago, or 25 years ago, I won't say 30 because I don't really remember hearing about it 30 years ago, but 25 years ago I do. The minute I started hearing about all this, can't have that name, can't have that name. That's, oh, that's something that, against Native Americans. Nope, can't be this, can't be that. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, that's something against Inuit. You can't be this, can't be that. I was like, and it started with schools. I'm like, then it's going to spread to colleges. Then it's going to spread to fucking the pros. Mm-hmm. And here we are. I'm tired of being right. <laughs> yes, <Ace> Ventura. <laughs> I'm I, tired I just want to walk right. up to one. I, I just want to walk up to one of these motherfuckers and slap the teetotal hell out of them. And go, what the fuck is the matter with? You? Well, no, no. What I and when I say I'm tired of being right is these are conversations Earl and I had. In 95. But when we talked about it, we didn't realize how quickly the internet was going to jumpstart everybody's fucking sandy ass fucking cunts. Okay? This entire fucking world needs a goddamn douche the size of a goddamn fucking asteroid is what, it was what it is going on here. But we didn't realize how quick the internet was going to kick this into high gear. We talked about it like, we'll be old men or dead by the time this happens. 25 years later. Wrong. Here we sit. We've been like children. We can't say a word like children we're told what we can and can't say yeah we say we want honest conversations but but, we don't. but, but when we're honest we're it, yeah no it's we don't want honesty we want to be told we we, we we want confirmation bias and you know if i, saw I don't give a, group, a fuck you don't like what i say <laughs> if i saw a group uh of native americans that weren't attached to some special interest group weren't attached to some fucking political party. In other words, weren't stumping 
and doing a bunch of horse shit and trying to and trying to and trying to pretty up what they're doing as you know well we just care about our 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 our, our people and our ancestry no you're you're pushing a political agenda and this is the way you get your foot in the door you're testing the water you're like a 5 year old child who you tell no and then they you sit right there you don't move and they move an inch and they look you dead in the face and dare you to say something sounds like John Goodman cuz if you fucking Lebowski. don't if you don't say anything next time they're moving 5 inches then next time it's a foot then next time they get up and walk across the room and take what's yours out of your hand and say, you can't have that. And remember, you're a goddamn adult. They're five fucking years old. And we've let it happen. We deserve yeah. this. We deserve this. I am now, I, right now, on this show, and from the, the, the day I die, I cannot see it changing. Hopefully it does, but I don't. I'm rooting for this country to go down in flames immediately. I want to witness it before I die. Because we do not deserve the freedom that we have been fighting for in this country for 250 fucking years. I'm going to object, and, and I, I think Chris can join me on this. I didn't contribute to this problem, so I have a right to bitch. Because I didn't have a goddamn kid. Not one. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have any part of this. Put, this on, put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> you can look at it as kids, or you can look at it as... Well, we sat still and didn't talk for too long. Shit. Now everybody, now the last people in the world who should have anybody's ear has everybody's ear. And it, it, we should have put a stop to it. But we didn't. We didn't put our fo- fucking foot down. All the bullshit talk, all the tough talk, I see it all the time on fucking line. I don't watch the NFL anymore. Well, you sure can't. I, I see you on every fucking post, the NFL post, bitching about how you don't watch the NFL. You sure do follow them, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the easiest thing to do if in the world if you're done with something? Leave it the fuck alone. Walk away. Yeah. Well, look, if people are going to bitch about the Washington Redskins or the Cleveland Indians or FSU Seminoles, Blackhawks, if they're going to bitch about all that, I ain't listening to a fucking word they say until they go stand with the fucking Indians on the pride lands and stop the oil companies from taking okay. their fucking land. You do that, you and I will talk about the sports team logos. Until then, shut up. The problem is is that most of the people that are going to do the most of the vocal bitching, that requires them to get up off their ass, put their phone down, and actually do something. And they think, see, this is what you don't understand. This is what, it, once you just, you realize that you don't have, like, you don't have to pick a side. I don't have to be a communist or a fascist. I can just be me and say, fuck you both. It's very freeing. And one of the things that's very freeing is these people don't want it. They think they're helping. Every tweet, every Facebook post, every fucking petition they fucking come up with, they think they're doing God's work. Yes. Period. They've been told they are special. You cannot convince them otherwise. They, for people who reject religion, they have a religious zealotry that is ridiculous. Just like every religion, they have their own original sin. You're born into it. You can't get away from it. You're white. You're racist. You're just born that way. That's your original sin. Well, if you do too, if you do, hold on. If you do too well, then we're going to call you white. That's how come in the last ten years we've started hearing such Orwellian doublespeak as white Latino, white Asian, (laughs) etc., etc. And believe me, black men, you're up. You're not even on deck anymore. You're getting pitched to. Because I'll dig up the fucking article that called uh, straight black men the straight white men of the oppressed. Meaning you ain't mm. shit. <laughs> Whatever You're that part means. of the problem. Well, I could tell you guys who is special. Her name is Tara Van Der, Van Der, De, Van Der Veer. Jesus Christ, Earl. She so is the really most- going to bring up women's basketball. Okay. Yes, I am. She is the most winning coach in college basketball for the women. Passing Pat, passing anybody else, she has won the most. Okay. Now, she coaches for Stanford. Now, this is shocking to me because I could have sworn Gino with the UConn Huskies was going to beat her first. But he's, he's close third. How long has she been at Stanford? Years. I was going to say, dude, there's no fucking way she's been there less than 20 years. Decades. Because Stan- Stanford is an exceptional college as far as academics, 
But let's be honest, they're not really known for being dominating in the sports, in the, in the college sports world. That's how come Jesus in khakis was such a fucking, you know, oh my God, he must be the quarterback whisperer. Look what he did with Andrew Luck at Stanford, you know, and it's like, no, Stanford got lucky that there's a motherfucker that can actually score high enough to get into Stanford and throw a football. <laughs> That's all that was. <laughs> So how many wins does she have? 1,099. How old is this broad? She's got to be like fucking 100, right? No. Seriously, how old is this bitch? I, I don't know how old she is. I didn't look how old she was. Tara it's Van like every- Derveer? Wait, don't bring up Van something. Der- I, look, man, I'm just saying. Anytime I hear anybody talk about Coach K said something, I'm like, and how do you know he said it? Did you, did you contact him via Ouija board? Isn't that fucker dead yet? It says like she's been million? coaching for 42 years. Yes. At Stanford? I mean, I'm assuming that's 42 years as a head coach. But, oh, these are w- career wins, not wins at Stanford. Yes. All time. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay. She's now the college, women's college basketball coach, GOAT. Well, hey, man. We said it when fucking, what's her I don't face? Know if she's the coach. She's just the winningest coach. Uh, I mean, we said it when, when, when uh, what's your face, you know, they start saying, winning this uh, college basketball coach ever, and people were like, no, winning this woman's college basketball coach, and it's like, dude, that many wins, it's still hard to fucking come by, let's be honest here. It's not exactly like, you know, you're not, you don't get a starter kit that gives you your first 200 wins for free, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you got to earn every single one of them fuckers. Yeah, that was Pat Summers. That was who she passed. She has been at Stanford since 1985. Yes. She, 35 years out of a 40, what, two-year career coaching? Yeah, she did 78 to 80 at Idaho, 80 to 85 at OSU. And then, yeah, since 85, she's been at Stanford. Well, hey, man, good for her. Look, I know, I know we talk a lot of shit about women's sports, but it's only because fucking... Don't try to tell me women's sports. Well, we'll 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 get we'll get to. I, I don't. Now take us down a road, but don't you, don't try to tell me that you're going to take a woman's college basketball team and put it against a men's college basketball team and say, if you don't, if all of you don't play your hardest, we're killing all of your family. All y'all's mamas are dead, and you're going to tell me that that that, that women's team has a snowball's chance in hell of winning. You're full of shit, and you don't know what you're talking about. That is not happening, period. End of story. Yeah, I was just, when I saw it, I was stunned because, you know, Pat Summers is the biggest name in basketball for women. And I could have sworn Gino was going to pass her first because he's had so many undefeated seasons with UConn that I thought, you know, UConn was going to be the team. And out of left field, here she comes. Stop saying these names like, A, you know who they are, and B, we know who they are. They're they're women's (laughs) college basketball coaches. Yeah, but you know Pat Summers. Pat Summit? Yeah, you've said her name wrong nine fucking times. Anyways. Must be so top of mind for you. Sorry. Half-ass sports fan. Yeah. It's easy. easy. That's a little hanging fruit ice. You you put it out. You set me up. I can't not take it. But, yeah, you, you know her from Tennessee. And you know the Yukon Huskies and the coach G- uh, Gino something or other. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. So, such a legend that, yeah, Gino something or other. Dude, he has 10, like 1,093 wins. But the only reason I'm bringing that up is, like I said, he had so many undefeated seasons. Good old something or other. Well, here's, okay. I, to me, this is the more interesting subject because, you know, the, uh, the fact that you have... <clears throat> Excuse me. The fact that you have uh, you know female coaches now breaking into the the traditionally male coaching ranks of sports period, um, including the general manager position. Uh, everything can't be a first. I mean, d- d- did everybody forget that a female position coach went to the Super Bowl last year with the, with the Forty ers uh, Are we supposed to act like that didn't, didn't happen? Uh, you didn't know the 49ers just had a female fucking coach. Katie Sowers. For years. I, I did not forget that. Oh, you did not forget? I thought you said you did not know that. Oh. I was going to say, well, then you didn't watch the Super Bowl. They, they won't let you they forget it. They only mentioned it every 10 minutes. Yeah. But, you know, ooh, there was your fr- – then some woman this season gets promoted to position coach. First woman – but 
what what about the one that was just in the Super Bowl? Yeah. How many firsts are we going to fucking have? Well, it's like the the Sarah Fuller, right? Which, by the way, breaking Sarah Fuller news, she's moving on from Vanderbilt to North Texas. That happened while we were talking. So, but yeah, everyone's is first, she still going to kick? There's no. She's playing soccer. Everyone's all gushing over her. Uh, the that glass ceiling's already been shattered twice. They're just the qualifier on it now is what because it, it's in a Power Five conference game, mm-hmm. and. And my problem with the narrative of this story is this wasn't like the other two were actually like trying to get on the team, right? Sarah Fuller was was because Vanderbilt had so much fucking COVID. They're like, oh, we need a kicker. Hey, girl soccer team, give us your best kicker. She wasn't trying to be on the, 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 the football <laughs> team. You know, she was asked because she was the best kicker because they were down to fucking, they didn't have anybody who could, they didn't want to forfeit. So... There's my two cents on Tara Fuller. Well, here's 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 the problem, okay? Our society won't let a woman play football the, and men play with her on the field the way football should be played. No go back and look at those kicks that she made. That is the softest of fucking coverage I've ever seen on kicks. Ever. And you know, of course here come all the apologists. Oh, well, it's college football, especially with COVID. They're not trying real hard to block extra kicks this well, year. Yeah, never run, 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 run. And how everyone tried to explain how her first kick wasn't shitty. Oh, no, it was like, shitty. They're like, oh, it was supposed to be I, a squib kick. No, it wasn't. No, it she wasn't. Just, it was she just, she kicked it like that. But I thought well, that was when me and you were talking, Chris, just us doing the show, and I told you her kickoff. Oh, my God. But see... And that's where the people who are like, if you think it's easy to kick a fucking field goal or to kick off a football, take your ass out on the field and try it. Hey, I'm absolute. It's not. That's why there's not that many fucking people that can do it. And then you add the pressure of the situation to practice. There's no pressure and people can't do it. Then you add the pressure of the game on the line. Other coach trying to fucking freeze you out by calling timeout at the last second. I mean, yeah, it's not easy. Look, no one's saying what they're doing is easy. They're getting an easy way out. What I'm saying is there's no coach or college football player who wants to go into history books as the one who called the play that got the first woman female kicker to score in a Power 5 conference because apparently, you know, we got to add those qualifiers constantly in the hospital. And that's what's going to happen if, if, if you take women out there who, I hate to break it to you folks, not everyone's built to play every sport. What? Okay? Earl played. High school football. Coached high school football. Was scouted by FSU. Ooh. If I put Earl's ass in the middle of a fuck, no, no, I'm getting my point. If I put Earl's ass on the 50 yard line and told retired ass Chris Spielman to hit him, Earl's going to the hospital that day. <laughs> yes. Chris, you and I will end up dead. Oh, yeah. likely. Speed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you'd be identifying my body. Okay. So I'm sorry. Five foot three, 115 pounds. You're getting creamed if they get past that fucking, if they get to, if they get to you before you get to kick off. Well, yeah, so you notice they're not giving her, they're not making, they're not having her punt because they don't. Like, I would love to just see her get lit up. Like, just they have her punt and she just, just fucking just trucked and just a big fucking pile of bones right in the middle of a fucking football field. This and is the honest would, to God. It would end all this conversation, all these conversations real quick. This is the honest to God's truth. I'm not bullshitting whatsoever. I'd love to see her fucking get just leveled. The guy get up, act like he's fucking do his, doing his little war dance and get her socks. You know what I'm saying? All that bullshit. And she just get up and be like, you hit like a bitch. And just fucking not even brush herself off and just be like, you ain't shit, motherfucker. And just walk her ass back it's to the a- sideline, cool, calm, and collected because she's that bad of a bitch. Because that's what you, I don't, you root for a team, you want the kicker to be badass. Okay, two quotes, fucking, uh, 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 oh shit, Ed Reed, he goes, what I loved about playing with the Hurricanes is that after we beat the shit out of teams on the field, we'd go rumble in the parking lot. And I'd have the meanest motherfuckers and other teams come up and go, god damn, even the white boys on your special teams can fight. They're like, yes. We are the fucking Canes. We don't allow pussies on this team. <laughs> Period. Damn, they'd, fuck it, they'd, kicker. they'd fight club it up in the parking lot? Oh, yeah. 
Before their bowl game, they had a fight in a strip club that spilled out into the streets in New Orleans. Like, the players were still carrying bruises and, and black eyes and, and busted lips from the brawl they had with the team they were playing at the bowl game. Like, Miami did not play back in the day, man. They did not give a fuck. They used to... This is this is this is one of the best stories out of out of the 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 U part one and two. Uh, go, you know, you get these freshmen in there, and they're getting hazed and everything. You know, you know all that stuff you can't do these days. He goes, and then they cut to the guy. And he's like, in my freshman year, I'm I'm wearing the locker room. And all of a sudden, we start hearing whoop whoop whoop, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, guy next to me in the locker next to me goes, better get around the fucking get to the middle, get yourself a good seat. What the fuck's that mean? They would rearranged the furniture into a little fucking like circle. And have players fight each other in the middle of the fucking circle in the locker room. That's how they settle disputes. And they, they, their signal for it was to start doing that whoop, whoop, and get everybody fucking riled up. Wow. And circled around. That's their own fucking team. That's their own fucking team. Like, now, what do you think they're going to do to your we ass? Liked. Yeah. Okay, that's the type of players I want. And I don't give a fuck if they're female, male, non-binary. Walk on four fucking legs. I don't give a shit. Just be a mean motherfucker out there and we won't have a problem. My problem is, is that the the disconnect from reality is okay. She's a woman. She was treated like she was treated like a man when she was out there. No, she wasn't. Go back and watch those kick. Go back and watch. Go back and watch those kicks. Watch the defense. That is not a defense that is playing like if that kick is made, they're going to lose the national championship. And Coming from a Michigan fan who had State beat them and never had a lead while the clock was running, all because of a botched kick, it is possible. Well, hey, you're, Just, you're bringing us right into the – we, we kind of segued into college football, but hey, let's – Well, well, hold on a sec because I, I, I did want to bring this up. Have you guys heard about – remember what I said? It starts with the kids and in school. Canton. Suburb of Detroit here in Michigan. Canton has decided when school gets back and everything goes back to normal or as close to normal as we can get post COVID. Don't say it. Oh. That trans men and women can play with biological men and women. Oh, I thought you'd say something else. Whew. And I'm like, that's, yeah. Go ahead. That's going to work. Go ahead. That, that, you know, I'm just, that's what I say now. Go ahead. Yeah. How many? Here's, here's what I, but here's, here's, we have the a few funerals. We will rethink this. Here's the problem. Once a few, once a few fucking trans men die or get paralyzed or really fucked up, then they're going to call for the fucking about uh, just to abolish the sport. Period. That's what I thought school. you were going to say initially. I thought you were going to say they're like, eh, we don't want to do high school football anymore. And I was like, eh, we're in Michigan. That, that that dog wouldn't hunt here right now. It's just it's 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 a, it's it's an extra step to that. Because that is ultimately, like you, this is what people need to understand. And you can roll your eyes, and you can turn off the podcast, and you can t- they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Cool, great, wonderful. I probably don't have many summers left on this fucking rock, so I won't be here to fucking do my, I told you so, I told you so, I, I, I told you so, dance in your face. But just remember, when there are calls in the next 10, 15 years, to stop all contact sports in high school, in little leagues, when there's no more contact in, in fighting and in, in hitting in hockey, when you can't even touch someone in fucking, in, 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 who's, who's on offense, when you're playing defense, unless they have the ball and have already ran three yards with it, then you can tackle them. Just remember what I said, because this is where all this shit's leading. And one politician from the from the, the party of absolute uselessness, the Democrats, stuck her hand in the air and said, that's bullshit, and introduced a bill that said, if you are trans and you, you cannot play sports with biological males, if you're a trans male, why? You will get fucked up, period. And, of course, she's an istophobe. All I wanted she's to hater. say was... And it's Tulsi Gabbard, by the way. You know, the, the left say is darling... The rich- Go ahead. I, all I want to say was, Rich has reminded me of necessary roughness when <laughs> Kathy Ireland gets ran over, and he's like, "Welcome to football," and she's like, "Welcome to footballs," and then racks him. I could just see that shit. 
I mean, it cost my team. If, if, it, if my team had a female kicker, that cost my team. So I'd be like, bitch, you got to control your shit a little bit better than that. Get them my doll or something. I don't know. Like, it's the same thing. It's it, Dude, it's the same thing when I fucking used to see fucking Sue doing dumb shit. I'm like, stop stomping on motherfuckers. You're good enough. You don't need to step on them. You already strike fear into their hearts, okay? Like, I, hey, you've already got motherfuckers see? going, he ain't hitting me. But, I mean, th- this is the world. This is the world. And everything is everything is now connected. Nothing is separate. Like you were talking about earlier, you just want to sit down for two and a half, three hours and forget about the bullshit in the world. Not anymore. Not anymore. Because someone with barely a high school education and can barely understand how to run football plays has decided they need to educate you on life. They need to tell the millions of people sitting at home, the vast, vast, 99.9 to infinity percent of them watching, making less money with more education than these idiots, they got to tell you how to live. What's right, what's wrong. And they're going to tell you when you're thinking wrong. It's amazing how all of these people with no life experience got everything figured out. Isn't it? There's yeah. a reason we don't let five-year-olds run the world. Just wait. We forgot. Time we Magazine forgot that. added a kid of the year this year. Which, no, by the way, just, which if, if you read that kid's credentials, that kid changed pretty much most adults with what that kid has done. But no, it's... Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't good old Greta. No, no, she would no. Hey, fuck Chris. that. Last year she was Time's Person of the Year. She she was Time Greta was Time Magazine's Person of the Year last year. Oh no, she got she she got to be at the adult table. <laughs> Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath, and as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast, and check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath, and always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath, and as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new. Our everyday low prices. The Home Depot. Now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. And now a game of commercial chicken. Brought to you by Progressive. Where we see how long flow can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. Oh, hi. Um... Okay, guess we should talk about something. Kind of tough to be put on the spot. Not sure what to say. But I know what I'm definitely not talking about. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save big! Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new. Our everyday low prices. The Home Depot. Now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net. Sporty. Chris, you know who doesn't have everything figured out? Who? College football. Uh, regarding, I mean, that's, that's, that, that is a loaded statement, sir. Well, because Notre Dame might not make the playoffs. Why do you, you seem to have a bee in your bonnet about that? Why? Because they're the undefeated team. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. They haven't lost. But what are, are they like 4 and 0? Like, how many games have they played? No, I think. Didn't they miss a ton? I think. No, I think they're ten and zero. But but the bee in my bonnet is because Clemson has lost a game and can be and probably will be in the playoffs, even though Notre Dame isn't. So you're not a fan of just they shouldn't be doing a CFP this year. They just shouldn't. I'm just I I, I know that's a hot take, uh, but I just just with the way everything's gone this year. I they just they shouldn't they shouldn't do it this year like every just do division games and we're done because yeah I think it's 
Uh, how many games has OSU called off this year? OSU is five and zero. Oh, they have missed a ton of games. Yeah, exactly. And and they're still going to go. What, what was I holding on for? Just to be fair. Just to be fair. Just to be fair. Have, was it OSU that called off the games, or was it the teams they were playing? Well, I said, there's one I want to get into. Oh, we can get right into it. Michigan fucking. Michigan didn't want to take their ass whooping. Michigan, yeah, they ducked the fuck out. They ran. They ran away. First there's, of all, you could. You, there's plenty. Of, you, you could have fielded a team. Uh, OSU's been playing on reserves for like most of the season. They they brought their reserves to whoop State's ass. Well, first of all, and I'm a Michigan fan. It hurts to say this, but I, I don't know if I've ever seen this team in such disarray in my lifetime. Uh, I'm just going to put this out there so we can put this baby to bed because I'm not going to sit here and talk about it for an hour. Uh Either Michigan doesn't want Harbaugh back or Harbaugh doesn't want to come back to Michigan. Because if they both wanted to be, if they both wanted each other, they'd already had an extension. He wouldn't be a lame duck coach. So that's right there. There's, there's trouble in, in paradise. Either the boosters and the, pro, and, and, and the athletic director don't want him or he don't want to come back. Now, here's my thing. Where the fuck does he think he's going? The Jets? If, the Lions? If the pros? He has to. Yeah. That's the only move he has. And here's the deal: that's not even an upward. It's not even up the ladder for him because he's already been a, a, a pro football coach. Mm-hmm. But if he goes to another college, it's a lateral move. And believe me, this Michigan is looking for the scapegoat to pin the last decade and a half. Well, almost decade and a half since 2008. So 12 years of fucking misery on, and. They'll be more than happy to do it to the prodigal son who showed up, didn't fucking deliver, and then bowed out, and now he's fucking coaching down the road somewhere. So I don't know what the fuck is gonna is going on. I don't understand what the fuck is going on with their their record this year. They absolutely ducked out on fucking OSU. I do not give a shit to not even talk about rescheduling that game. They're like, eh, like there was COVID. there was talk of there was talk of we'll play it later, we'll play it later, and then all of a sudden. Now, once again, and just so uh, full disclosure, the local sports talk station, 15 years ago when it became a sports talk station, there were more Wolverine fans than state fans. Now there's a lot of state guys there, and they've gotten, they, they've thinned out the Michigan crowd quite a bit, all right? And the reason I bring that up is because they're not getting a pass for this, all right? I mean, there's, there, there, there's, there's nitpicking, and, you know, like, oh, well, Michigan said they couldn't play Ohio State, then had to practice the next the Sunday after the day they were supposed to play. Well, yeah, because they got a fucking gang of players back who were on quarantine due to COVID testing. They wouldn't have had them that Saturday. On top of that, they still didn't have a full fucking squad out there. But nobody has a full squad. Football, you play without a full squad. You don't even go to week one with a full fucking squad. And I'm, and I'm talking... How many times have we heard players get hurt in inter squad scrimmages during spring games for college football? It happens. You ha- not for nothing, but isn't that why you have backup players? Exactly. You have to fucking play through that shit. And Michigan took the chicken shit way out. Why? Because it would have been ugly. It would have been way. It, they're, they're making Rich Rod years look good this year. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Because Rich Rod wasn't here the amount of time Harbaugh was. And if Rich Rod was in his, what, fifth, sixth season and was having a season like this, COVID or not? Uh Uh-oh. You there, Rich? I'll finish it for him. COVID or not, they would plan to kidnap his ass instead of the governor. (laughs) Chris, what did you do? The Michigan Mafia came for him. Harbaugh snuck up behind him with a chloroform rag. Cut his line. (laughs) The Matrix has Rich. Cut the hard line. He reset the router. Give him a few. So I guess if you got to pee or something, go do it now. Freshen up your drink. I, I just did that while he was talking about Michigan. Ah. Hey, enjoy that fancy football victory. God damn it. I don't, don't even, get butt hurt. We all have injuries. Uh, no, I'm butt hurt because and it, this league doesn't even, it's a free league. I shouldn't even give a fuck. But no, because I scratched and clawed my way into the playoffs after not having CMC all fucking year. And then it looked like I was going to have him. And then he wasn't going to play. And it's like, ah, whatever. I still got David Johnson. And then he ended up being a close 
COVID contact. So, yeah, <laughs> I lost by less than five points. If I'd have played, if I'd have played the Rams, you wouldn't have had a chance. Mm. What's All up? right, I'm back. If I'd have played Amari Cooper instead of Corey Davis. Wait, are we in the playoffs already? Yeah, you're about to. You're playing rich. It's the second week of the playoffs. Can you guys oh, hear me? Up. Yes, sir. Hello. Yo. Okay. All right. Um. So. Wait, well, first of all, Harbaugh. He's he, been saying it for three fucking years. He's got to go. And I don't know. I, I, this. This. We're afraid of of you know what's going to happen. Who are we going to get? That ship has sailed, man. That ship has fucking sailed. Period. End of fucking story. I don't know what the fuck else to tell you. And they really, uh, they need to get rid of him. And you know who I want? I want a guy like Luke. I want a guy like Luke Fickle down at Cincinnati. He's the name I keep hearing batted about. And the reason I want him is because he took Cincinnati, a program that does not have anywhere near the resources, anywhere near what Michigan has, and has turned that program around. Ain't no, got it right in front of me. So, you know, first season, four and eight. Okay. Well, it's first season. Second season, 11 and two. Third season, 11 and three. This year, you just said it, eight and no. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll 30, 34 and 13 in four years. Now, imagine what he could do with the resources they have at Michigan. Oh, and did I mention? He was an intern head coach at Ohio State at one point. Yeah. So no, you're you're not you're not getting your Michigan man, which is such bullshit. We, they need to get rid of that mentality. But you know who else used to work for Ohio State before he became a coaching legend here? Bo Schembechler. He knows how the Bo, sausage yep. is made down in Columbus. I mean, he 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 could help. Even if even if he goes in in his first two three years. He doesn't beat Ohio State, but he keeps it close. He knows what a winning college football program looks like and what it takes, period. So why the fuck are they wasting their time with fucking Jesus and khakis? He's done. He doesn't want to be here or else he'd have signed that extension. Every time, every time they ask him about anything, Michigan just had a running back that committed to here instead of, instead of Georgia, which I'm like, I guess... That means that he doesn't like to get paid, but whatever. Because you know, when's the last time a running back came out of Michigan that did anything in the pros? You go to Georgia, you're almost guaranteed to be fucking drafted in the first two rounds as a running back, but whatever. I say, uh, does shoelace count? But I mean, you know, they asked him in the, in the in the press conference, "What's the deal with your contract?" I'm I'm committed to the program. I'm committed to Michigan. This is where I work. Oh, so in other words, you're you're just looking for something better. You're giving me pat answers. When I start hearing pat answers, that tells me that's the equivalent of when you, your your girlfriend, you know, you wake up and your girlfriend's sitting there with her bags packed, going, "Sit down, we need to talk." Well, yeah, yeah you saw, know what it, you know where that conversation's going. I saw the other day. Yeah, I, I think it's probably the same. You're talking about the same thing. A, a story that said uh, Jim Harbaugh says he's committed to Michigan. I'm like, oh, that means he's fucking. He, he's going to announce where he's going after a week after the season's over. Let me tell you something. If there is an NFL team dumb enough to hire him. <laughs> bye bye. No one. They, Later. I don't. I don't. Training I, camps I, in nope. Allen Park. It's not that far from Ann Arbor. No, nah, that ain't going to happen. Stop it. That ain't going to happen. Well, you know what? Go ahead and say it. It doesn't scare me now because I know something. <laughs> My boy's in town. I'm good. Well, are we done beating uh, the. The the Michigan horse, I mean. It's, it's, well, I I mean at this point, what is it? it, it you are now uh, three years ago. I said you're a, a middle of the conference, fucking middle of the pack football team in the Big Ten conference. Now you're bouncing around near the bottom. Oh you're yeah, lucky Rutgers, you're lucky Rutgers. Is there. You are very lucky Rutgers is there to keep you from fucking bouncing off the bottom face first. You'd be like that motherfucker from the. From the old uh, uh, band from TV, or not band, but uh, uh, Faces of Death. The bitch who jumped off the building, hit the ground, bounced, and then came back down and did that twice. <laughs> like, like, it's not bad enough that you hit because you jumped off a five-story building. Then you start to rise up in the air, and you're like, I'm not dead, and I get to go through this again. Oh, great. Yay! <laughs> 
And then it happens a second time. And at that point, if you're not dead, you're just like, man, fuck it. Oh, my God, please. I hope the next, uh, hope the next impact kills me. But sure, there's, it's a joke. It's a joke. And, and let me tell you something. If Harbaugh stays another season, Michigan State and Ohio State, you're welcome. You all might as well fucking celebrate in the middle of the fucking streets. I, for however long that he's here, you're almost guaranteed wins. Don't even pencil in the W. Put it in ink. I'll fire up a couch up in East Lansing. Start celebrating. I mean, this is just, this is, yeah, Michigan exists in a bubble. And the nonsense that I've seen since Lloyd Carr was shown the door. And yes, it was brought up earlier this week on, on, on uh, uh, a podcast I listened to. Lloyd Carr was shown the door. He was told. Bye bye. It's amazing. The, guy, the the man who delivered you a national championship, you said, "Fucking peace out, get the fuck out of here." And the whole reason that came up is because Lloyd Carr. Someone asked him, "Would you coach again?" And he goes, "Well, yeah." And he's got to be as old as God at this point. Dude, what was he ninety? Yeah. But I'm just saying, like you know, from the horse's mouth. Yeah, I wanted to keep coaching. I'm not necessarily at Michigan because I get the feeling that. A seventy-five, you look a little, a little long in the tooth. Yeah, um, but I mean, like you know, I, I get the feeling that Michigan kind of was basically like, yeah, thanks for everything, later. And the attitude was, where do you go from there? You know what I'm saying? I, Bo didn't coach for anybody else when he left. And if you really I, put Bo Schembechler's record up against Lloyd Carr's, how many national championships Bo win? Same as Harbaugh, none. Yeah. So, you know, why is one held up in, in such high regard and the other is, is treated like a fucking redhead stepchild? Makes no sense. That's that's what's got me pulling my hair out about this fucking this football program. Didn't used to be this way. And I don't know if this is just... You can't say you're trying to embrace the future of college football and still bury 90% of yourself in past accomplishments and people that are dead. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't work. They, you, you can't have one foot in the past and one foot in the fucking future because you're pissing all over today. And that's all Michigan's been doing for 12 years. Because when Rich Rod came, oh, we're going to go to spread offense, going to drag us in the 21st century. <laughs> Hulk, come in. Hulkamania, baby. We're a brother. Oh. Okay, you beat a, 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 a in-transit Ohio State team. And what else did you do? And as much as you want to lay all this at the feet of Dave Brandon, he's been gone for a long fucking time. Like, yeah, he he definitely is the guy that drove the train off the track. But you you have had a you have had a long fucking time to put the train back on the track. Well, yeah, Ward Manuel has been in there since what? 2015? Is that uh no, 2016. So he's been there for all of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. He's been there five years. That's more than enough to, well, why are we talking? To, yeah. Who's, bring, who's bringing up fucking the former AD? That's what I want to know. Like, and I mean, and thinking that that's like what? Like, you're, you think that's going to be serious? Like, anyone's going to take that shit seriously? He's been gone. That's like bitching about fucking uh, uh, Rod Marinelli being a Lions fan. What do you, how many coaches ago was he? Well, yeah, no, that's it. What? I always think Brandon was Brandon and Brandon showed up in 2010. I thought I thought he showed up earlier. So yeah, it's been a collective uh, cl- uh, f- uh, fucking of this program, athletic director wise. It's been it, it's been a group effort over the last two decades. I yeah, I I've, I've hey, I was in Florida when they won the national championship. Didn't really get to see fucking anything about it. Didn't get to really, because, you know, Florida don't give a fuck about Michigan. They don't play Michigan games in Florida. <laughs> they, Florida's got the Gators, Seminoles, the Canes. Canes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't. Uh, Florida's they'll play, good. They'll play, they'll play Florida international games before they'll play a Michigan game. Believe that. That's that's real talk for your ass. So. I, that's Southern football. Yep. You go to Texas, they don't want to hear about anything about but but Texas football. That's it. Man. No, I told you when I was in Alabama, man, I was in grocery stores. They had fucking cut out to Saban in the goddamn grocery store. I'm like, yeah, all right, roll time. See, I, I but real quick, just going back to that Luke Fickle thing, the the if he comes to Michigan, 
he just cut ties with everybody and burned the bridges with everybody he ever dealt with at Ohio State. Oh, yeah. End of story. So he's going to have to be... You, you're going to have to have balls of fucking steel and big enough to come in a dump truck to take that job and be him. But he could be motivated, right? Like, they didn't want to keep him. Like, oh, yeah? Didn't want to keep me? I'm going to come back and fucking haunt your dreams, dicks. Uh, you know, hatred's... Hatred's a powerful motivator. Hatred of losing. And there's people out there that, that hate to lose more than they love to win. And that's what drives them. There's people out there that have made entire careers out of spiting people that aren't even in their life anymore. Some of them aren't even breathing anymore. You know, I, Jesus Christ. Michael Jordan got out there at his Hall of Fame induction speech and was still carrying around a chip on his shoulder about his high school coach. The point where he brought it up in his Hall, Hall of Fame speech. Like, dude, really, yeah, dude? Yeah. That's 40 years ago. You changed well, the game. You're a Hall of Fame player. There's a line of shoes named after you. You did you it. You're arguably the greatest who ever played the game. Yeah, and you're still mad you got cut in 10th grade? Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, but from one, one coaching fiasco to another. Yeah, I think this is our first show since the, the, the changing of the guard here in Detroit. The Patriots West experiment is fucking over. Later, assholes. Bye bye. Take your pencil, shove it up your ass, shove it in your beard, whatever. <laughs> My Iserman is home. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing that pisses me off. They brought Chris Spielman in as an assistant to the president of football operations, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I get that. So basically, he's an advisor. Just make him the president of football operations. You don't think he knows that's what he's what, doing? That's what I want to know. Did you offer him the position? Did you offer him a GM position? Did you talk to him about, have you ever thought about coaching? Have you ever thought about going into the front office, not in a GM position, like maybe president of football operations? You ever thought about any of that? Because we've been, we, Detroit's been through this. Well, yeah, we, the, 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 the Detroit area has been through this before. Remember last time, they brought in Tony Dungy as the, as the person who was going to advise them. They went to the NFL and asked for help in looking for a head coach. The fucking NFL themselves, they went to him and were like, could you please send someone? And they were like, yeah, we got someone just for this. Well, if you're good enough to fucking advise me about the coach to hire, why am I not hiring you as a GM? If you're that good of a scout, a, a, a judge of talent, why am I not putting you in the head coaching position? That's got to tell you something right here. Guys like Spielman and Dungy and fucking, you know, well... <laughs> Well, then it turns out back in the day, Detroit or, or Dungey and uh, uh, Bill Parcells wanted to come to Detroit. And Detroit said, no, thank you. We got this. Oh, really? I wonder what, what, what year was this? Uh, it was before Dungey took over the Bucks. Who gives a goddamn? It's Dungey and Parcells. <laughs> so this is so this is Morhenweg era Lions. Good times. This is, t- yeah, yeah, probably. Well, with Dungey tail end of Wayne Fonts and Parcells, yeah, around the time Barry retired, from what I gather. So this is, Bob, so this is Bobby Ross era. Neat. Great call. Front office. But I, here, here's good luck. All Lions fans, I, I don't know what to tell you. This shit, you ain't winning anytime soon. That window shut. Caldwell pried it open. Patricia, uh, Quintricia made sure that they they didn't just slam it shut. They painted it and nailed that motherfucker shut. So you're going to have some work to get that window back open. Even a crack. Yeah, Yeah, Rich, but you know what? Here's the thing, brother. They got Spielman, all right? We we don't need to get the window open. He'll run right through that motherfucker because that's just how mean of a motherfucker he is. He ain't going to be on the field. That's the problem. He knows knows the talent. Do you understand he's not playing? He knows how people are. It does not matter. He knows the people. And he'll bring that mentality. And that's what I want to see. It's not about who's... If he's playing or not, he's not going to be making any coaching or general manager decisions. He's advising, which tells me that either... He's happy where he's at, which I'm assuming is in the. He's still doing announcing for college football. Oh, right? No, I, I heard he he. Uh, I, I heard he quit. Like he did this Lions gig is full time. I heard he told Fox, "Hey, I'm gonna go work in the Lions front office." 
If, well, if that's the case, who the fuck are they going to get to sit above him as GM? Maybe he's there to tell him to make all the right football moves. Who knows? Uh, Lewis, Lewis Riddick is, is interviewing for the uh, job. He's also interviewing for Houston, too. Yep, sure is. He's interested in Jaguars as well. I'd take Houston out of those three. Yeah. I think they're closer. You're looking at a complete rebuild here in Detroit. That's what I want them to do. Blow it all up now. While you're while while you've blown it up from the top, keep going. Because I think we're we 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 may have seen it's another hot take. Uh hold on. We may have seen Matthew Stafford play his last game here in Detroit. I told you at the beginning of the season, I really don't see him playing in Detroit next season. Now I figured he'd be traded before the trade deadline because as much as he's maligned here in Detroit, Matthew Stafford has a good reputation nationwide as a quarterback. He's seen as a Phillip Rivers type quarterback, the guy that could get it done, but he's just never had the right weapons at the right time altogether on the right team. How many teams are sitting here going, if we only had a, a, a competent average to above average quarterback, there's Matthew Stafford, and he's what, 33? Yeah, that's old 30, 40 years ago for a quarterback. That's not old these days. I mean, you've already peaked, but you're not you're not near the base of coming down the other side of the mountain at 33 these days. And he's a pretty tough fuck. He could probably play at least 40 if he wanted to, barring a, tr- a you know horrific injury. Should have traded him when his... Should have traded him. That way, when you when you hand the GM, you hire a GM. It's your show. Do what you want. He's got draft picks. Because as of right now, they're not even picking in the top ten. Nope. The Lions have had this bad of a season. They're not even in the top ten of draft picks. No, they're heading for middle of the pack. They're sitting at five and eight right now. I mean, they're going to end up. Uh, and well, four, on top of it, eleven. But outside a pretty boy. I forget his name. Clemson's quarterback. Uh, Trevor, what's his nuts? Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. Outside outside of uh, uh, Fabio there with his hair. Who the fuck is the, what other slam dunks at quarterback are are in this draft? None. Yet, you got fucking, last year, they were picking third. They could have picked someone to sit behind Stafford for this year. I mean, Honestly, if you're trading Stafford, you want to get as high a pick as possible because you're looking to basically draft his replacement. But haven't we learned over the last 20 years that probably the the, the most successful way to, to groom a backup quarterback is to sit him behind your, your de facto starter for a few seasons? I mean, Steve Young, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> fucking, I mean. Tom, the, Tom Brady. On and on. And Brady, on. Drew on, Brees. On. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I, it's 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 very rare for you to draft a quarterback, plug him in, and him start having success immediately anymore. Patrick Mahomes looking at you. That's the only one I can really think of. I mean, I and I'm talking about, but once again, the Chiefs had a lot better team to for him to plug into than the Lions do oh, yeah. or have. Yeah, I would, just a little so, bit. Same thing with Lamar Jackson in Baltimore. He was coming into a much better situation. Same than, thing with Wilson in Seattle. There you go. I mean, so it's either park him behind your fucking starter, let him learn for a couple of years, or this is the damn near the final piece you're looking for, and it, and 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 you make the you make the right call because God knows you can make the wrong one. I, where's all the Mariota fans? Where's the, where's uh, how you doing, Jameis Winston? Steal any good crab legs lately? These are supposed now, to be now starting to sound like he's talking about Philly. How you doing, Hurt? Well, these are supposed to; those two are supposed to be saviors for the franchises that drafted them. How'd that work out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you got a Tom Brady sitting in Tampa Bay, who's as old as me. I don't even know where the fuck Mariota's at. Oakland on the bench, oh, yeah. chilling. Yeah, Chucky collecting quarterbacks like he usually does. Setting them up on the bench. Hey, you look good over there. Not both those guys you well, mentioned. You, you do have warm in the you bench. You have Chris's favorite though over in L.A. Oh, Herbert, we'll get to him. Oh, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, like, look, let's let's try to bring this Lions talk to a close with yeah. with a. There's 31 let me ask other a question, teams. And let me ask you a question. And let me get you guys' opinion. Do you think the Lions get it right this time? Yes or no? Only. Uh, for, oh, go ahead. Go. Go ahead, Ice. Oh, um, for me, if they keep Chris Spielman, they'll get it right. You 
clearly have a boner for Chris Spielman. Oh God! Dude, yeah. His fucking. Are you kidding me? Have you ever seen that man play? Yeah, bro. He, he used to wear his Spielman jersey so much. We thought that it, it had it like somehow morphed into part of his skin. <laughs> and if and if he went if we if we stripped him naked, he would still have a Lions Spielman jersey on. He's the epitome of what I learned football to be. If I can't beat you, I'm going to beat you. That, that is the epitome of Chris Spielman. To answer your question, Rich, if the Lions, uh, uh, I don't think you were on the show where, because I think we were talking about, like, they got to fire Patricia, like, and then the next day they fired Patricia. Um, mm-hmm. Stop giving people their first if this is if this ends up being someone's first chance gig again then no they won't get it right if they actually get somebody proven which i saw something the other day it says they actually wanted to go with proven leadership this time around then maybe they'll get it right but if this is we love to the last 20 years this has been a great spot for you to try your hand at having your first head coaching or gm gig and fuck that we if if we do that again, then nothing will change. But if we don't, if we, then then maybe maybe the culture will we, finally change. If we stop trying to cash in on other people's luck, basically. So Bill Belichick had a system, and his coaching staff and players, and well, we were like, even, like not even that. That's the last ten years. I'm I'm, ta- I'm talking about Matt Millen. I'm talking about Marty Morhenweg. I'm talking about Rod Marinelli. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about Jim Schwartz. Like, yeah, stop giving people their first shots. Get a proven coach in here. Get a proven GM in here. Mm-hmm. Well, you have a lot of people who also t- tend to think that, you know, oh, okay, but what did Mariucci do? What did Bobby Ross do? What, what, you know, what, what, they'll even say, what did, uh, 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 shit. God damn it. Brain fart. Coach who just fucking who Patricia replaced Caldwell. Thank Caldwell. you. Yeah, what Caldwell do? He was an experienced coach. So it's like you can't win. Yeah, here's the deal. <clears throat> and to me, this is this is any franchise. Your fan base is important, but your fan base don't run the team. And for all the bitching and crying and, and pissing and moaning and gnashing the teeth that the fan base will make, winning solves everything. Yep. So okay. if you make if you make a move that's not popular with the fan base, but they go ten and six next year, they win a playoff game in the next the year after that, find themselves in the NFC championship game within five years, all that bitching's gonna be in the rearview mirror and forgotten about. So just maybe you're right, Earl. Maybe they need someone like Spielman to come in and go, I don't give a fuck what anybody who's not sitting at this table has to say. I know I'm competent and I have a high football IQ. How much experience in football, do, if we added it all together around this table, have? And this fucker's sitting there drinking a bush light with his 400-pound ass on a Sunday watching the game, and we're going to worry about what he thinks? Don't think so. I don't give a fuck. And maybe that's, maybe, the, maybe that's part of the Lions' problem. I don't know. I've heard horror stories that they're too loyal to their people in the front office, the Ford family is. Well, I mean, you need someone to come in there and be like, fuck you, no. That, that's where I was heading. Now that I, I've busted my nut about Spielman, honestly, and I told Chris this when we were doing the show, and, and we talked about it here just now, this doesn't come down to Chris. This doesn't come down to Matt Patricia. This comes down to the Ford family. I don't care who they get. First, last, you're everything. Whatever they get. If the Ford family can spend the money to get the talent, the Lions will win. Okay? You got to put people in front office that know the people to get. Then you got to spend the money to get them. Period. End of file. If you if you don't have the money to get the players, you're not going to change anything. And we just sat here and went through all the coaches that had experience that that got their first shots, their GMs. We've went through all of it, and the only constant is the Ford family. Okay. Now, if the Ford family spends money this time, gets the people that are competent and can get the talent, then yeah, they'll get it right. But if they get the best fucking GM on the planet with the winning, if Bill Belichick comes over and coaches the Lions, you're still going to have a shit team if the Fords don't put out the money for the players, period. Well, there's a salary cap and a salary like floor. You have to spend a certain amount. 
can't just go out there and field a team of motherfuckers making minimum wage. So, I mean, they, they it, it's not like the, the, the baseball, what do you mean spend money? They spend money. They just spend it on the wrong fucking players. Yeah. I understand that, Rich. But what I'm saying is, is, is they'll spend money on one player. You know, we, look through just from 2000. You have Barry Sanders. That was your one player. Then you have Matt Stafford. That was your one player. Then you had Megatron. That was your one player. All of the time, you're only spending money on one person. Megatron and, was in my opinion, too much. Staff. Megatron was drafted before Stafford. Yes. Okay. All right. His rookie contract was up. He got his, he got his big payday contract before Stafford's rookie contract was even up. Right. Was it Megatron right. so, on the Owen team? Yes. That was his, that was his, uh, he was drafted in 2007. He was drafted when uh, Mike Martz was here as the offensive coordinator. Because Mike Martz, I remember, when they drafted him, he's like, I'm, I'm already drawing up plays on how to use them deep. Right, Rich. But what I'm saying is, is they have those players. Why not build a team around them? Why only spend money that one time for that one player and get us all geeked? Oh, my God, look, at we got the best wide receiver in the National Football League, Megatron. Look at this motherfucker. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Where's the where's the running back, the premier running back? Where's the offensive lineman that's going to protect the quarterback to throw to him? Look, I understand what you're saying. However, you're acting like this is a destination, a football destination town. It's not. You can't force free agents to come here. Sue's sister got on fucking Twitter and was like, I can't wait till his contract's up. We're gone. You're right. And that's my point. That's why you need somebody with Chris, like Chris Bielman. Doesn't need to be, but thank God it is. To come in and change the mentality of that locker room, of that office, of the whole team, and say, look, we're coming and we're going to do this, and that's it. Well, Who, who wants to get on board? Because choo-choo, motherfucker. I can't. I, dude, we've done this for six years with the Lions. I can't do it for another 40 minutes. So I'm glad you finished with what you had to say because we're moving the fuck on. Mm-hmm. And, but we need to change the culture. I've been hearing that fucking all my life. And I've been, we've been beating that fucking horse for four years on this fucking show, dude. But it's it ain't the truth. changed, and it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't happening. Okay, Rich, but you've changed everything How else. Many times, let me ask you a question. How many times you got to dump a load in your bitch and she doesn't get pregnant before you figure out this bitch is barren? <laughs> that is my point, Rich. We have changed everything else. We've changed every player on the team, every player in the, in the office. We've changed it all, bro. If you don't change the culture and you don't change the mindset of the Ford family, you'll never get it right. It'll never be a destination. Well, you will never see a Super Bowl. Let me tell you what. They ain't fucking, they ain't finishing strong. So I don't know what the fuck. Hey, someone want to place a bet whether they win another game the rest of the season? <laughs> no. I'm just saying. I mean, that's a hell of a fucking four final games. <laughs> like, they might beat the Vikings. Might that's a big might, but yeah, no. That I, I expect them to go over. I, I I expect the Lions are done winning. They will go five and eleven this year. Well, I mean, I'll say this, man. I, Buccaneers are kind of what I thought they were. Seriously, so I mean, uh, yeah, they are who we thought they were. Yeah, they they, they might beat the Vikings, but man, oh. I, I the Buccaneers are the, are the most uh, Vikings are the most suspect that 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 they could beat. And it, it's like they're one, they're one A, and one B to me is Tampa Bay. Oh no, they'll beat the fuck out of Tampa Bay. Will beat the fuck out of the Lions. Oh yeah, that's not even. I, I'm a, a, a downhearted Lions fan, and I can promise you, they will not win the Tampa Bay game. Yeah, yeah man. Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net. You heard you could save big when you bundle home and auto with Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw a link for a survey about which type of bread you are. And now you're on question 17, barely scratching the surface of your bread identity. You always thought of yourself as a brioche, but are you actually more of a pumpernickel? Ah, yes. They said it was easy to save money bundling with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in MassPath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot. 
now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Maspeth, and always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Progressive presents The Sounds of the Old World. The year is 2019, and someone is waiting for a table at a restaurant. Thompson, party of four. Thompson, party of four. Thompson, party... Oh, there you are. This has been The Sounds of the Old World. Brought to you by Progressive, where drivers can still switch and save like it's 2019. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. ChristopherMedia.net. Sporty. Guys, I don't, I don't know if it's because I follow everything Bucks because I'm a Bucks fan, so I hear shit that like other people really don't. That is not a united fucking team down there in Tampa. That is a team that has a head coach and a fucking Hall of Fame quarterback who appear to be at each other's throats. And I'm just going, mm, that's not how you win usually. And there's Plenty of every fucking game, it seems like there's plenty of fucking stories and opinion pieces being put out about whether it's Arians not calling the right plays for Brady or Brady's not executing properly because he's a system quarterback. Well, and that's fine, but you do have a Hall of Fame quarterback and the most weapons on any team anywhere in the fucking league. He'll figure it out, especially against somebody like the Lions. Yeah, it's it's... No, and just flat out, we don't have enough people to cover all of his weapons. Now, I will say, to give credence to Rich's argument, Tampa Bay has won eight games this year. Only two of them have been above, uh, have been against teams above 500. The Lions have won one game against a team above 500. So, I mean, you know, you do, you, you put that stat next to each other. Lions got a shot. Okay, I'm just going to say this. If you put a bet on the Lions beating them, I'm going to smack the shit out of you because you should have gave the money to me. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Yeah, no, right. It's just throwing your money away. Trust me. I get it. But it's, I would say, like, Tampa Bay is ahead. Let's, well, you know, let's, 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 let's look at their schedule. Let's see what those, let's see who they've played, who, who most of those, well, it, it, only two of them are above 500 teams. So obviously, the other six are cake teams. Who's Tampa Bay got left? They got the Falcons, the Lions, and the Falcons again. So Tampa Bay is probably going to end up a 10-win team, but against a bunch of garbage. So, I mean, I, under, I, 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 I can understand Rich's reservations. I mean, he's trying to not be disappointed. That's it. He, he what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one that said before, the minute Tom Brady signed with Tampa, I was like, eight and eight. Yeah. Oh, okay, look, Rich, you're setting yourself up so you don't. You can go, okay, there, see, I knew. And not be disappointed. Yeah, the, when they signed Tom Brady, that's how you were. But then they signed Gronk, and you were like, yeah, but he's old and he's busted. And then they signed Fournette, and then you were like, but he's injury prone. And then they signed AB, and he brings a lot of problems. Dude, <laughs> at some point, what the let fuck? It go. Has, what the, let it happen. What the fuck has what the fuck has Gronk and AB brought to the table? If nothing else, they take a good cornerback away from your target, dude. I'm just saying, like to support Rich. I'm just saying they ain't beat nobody. They're, so if you're running, if you're running a play with a single back, you got a, you got a, a running back, a tight end, and a wide receiver, uh, and their decoys. Uh, Okay. And they're decoys. So you got two receivers who are actually threats and three decoys. And once they figure out their decoys, they're not going to double team them. And on top of that, Gronk's been playing like halftime. He can't catch a cold that comes his fucking direction. This is not the Gronk that fucking rode off into the sunset out of New England. No. And AB, what the fuck has he done for two seasons now? Yeah, the same party boy Gronk. Uh, What AP does is he vultures touchdowns. I mean, AP, I'll say, has been... You know what AP is there for this season? He's there to mentor uh, Swift. He, he's the old... He's the grizzled old veteran there to mentor the rookie. No, I'm talking about AB. Oh, AB? Oh. Antonio oh, Brown. Oh, sorry. Uh, AB, this is... My summation is this is his reclamation year. This is shut up, keep your nose clean, just do your job, and some team will sign you next year. 
Like you're, he's he's not there this year to to break touchdown and receiving records. He's there to show uh, Hare Goodell that he can act right and to get because his his deal is only one year. So he's just there to show the re- thirty one other teams that he can act right and still play football, so he can get signed to go somewhere else next year. That I mean, is I'll say this: what AB is this. doing, they signed Brady for two years. If Brady is bound and determined come hell or high water to go out on a Super Bowl. He's coming back next season if they don't win this year. So if they go nine and seven, ten and six, make the playoffs, get bounced, hey, bring him back for another year. Because once he goes, who the fuck how is this team going to be relevant? I'm back to watching a shit team. I might as well root for the Lions. So you're sitting here saying, let it happen. Let it happen. All right, Rapey, Rapey McRaperson, I'll let it happen. <laughs> but maybe, yeah. I fucking, maybe, maybe I want to see an, an actual Tampa Bay team that's playing games that mean something late in the season for two years in a row. Yeah, that's what, I never expected the Super Bowl out of them, uh, him coming to fucking ta- Tampa. Now, I've said flat out, I think at the beginning, of the, when Tampa was just adding pieces like crazy, I was like, they're all in. They truly believe they can win the Super Bowl this year. I never said I believed that they could win the Super Bowl. I never said I was all in it because I wasn't. You got a lot of old pieces out there. You have a quarterback that's going into a brand new fucking system, and it's showing. Guys, they... <laughs> in seven years, he gets an ARP card. The Saints beat them twice. Once by 35 points, once by 11. Those aren't close games. That's the cream of the crop of their division. And they got their asses handed to them. I mean, dude, the fucking Rams beat them. I mean, at least that was a fucking, you know, nail-biter. I mean, it was a close game at the end, at least, is what I'm saying. But they still lost. Oh, no moral I'm victories. Gonna say, I'm going to say this, the and, I, and I'm going to let you have your, your way with it. But when they signed Tom Brady, I was with you. It was like, oh, shit, yeah, maybe in a year or two. But then they did, dude. They added so many pieces. They did go all in. And the only team I can put Tampa Bay up next to and say that they're even matched is Kansas City. <laughs> At any given play on the offense, you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, you have Leonard Fournette, you have Gronkowski. I mean, I'm going to go all the way here. You have Mike Evans, Godwin, AB, all of which have to be covered on any given play. Kansas City would smoke Tampa Bay like a fucking Christmas ham because it's, it's the holidays. It's Christmas next week. No, nah, man. Like, it's. Uh, it's uh, Tell me another team that's loaded, Chris. Another, like that. That's loaded? Like I mean, that. On paper, they're loaded, but. Uh, okay, uh, Cleveland. On paper, they're fucking loaded. And they're not. I mean, they're. How are they loaded? See, I. See, uh, you're. 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 You're getting lost in the sizzle and you're not even fucking realizing that they're just letting you smell the steak you're not even fucking looking at it who gives a shit what they look like on paper what's their their record is what they are their record is not a team that's going to march its way to the super bowl and 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 just ride roughshod over fucking whoever's in their way Rich, their, record says, what, their record the says their record says record their record tells me when they meet the fucking Saints in the playoffs, they better have their fucking ass kicking insurance paid up. Well, and look pay at that deductible down. He was there, dude. It wasn't pristine every time they won the Super Bowl. It wasn't amazing and immaculate every time. And when he faced Peyton Manning, oh my God, he might have lost a game or two. But they're learning throughout the season. And when they get to that postseason, game fucking on, Hoss. All right, man. Well, I mean, the NFC I, is a I, farce. I, I, it's just because yesterday, and for some reason, I don't know, I got as a new cartridge or whatever, I got high and I went down a rabbit hole and I did a whole bunch of math and I made a fucking spreadsheet of of teams and their, their records against teams over 500 this year. Dude, if I'm telling you that, that the Super Bowl is coming out of the AFC this year, for starters. That's the strongest. And... Dude, Rich, you bring up the, the, the Bucks meeting the Saints. The Saints have two more wins overall no, 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 than no, no, the no, Bucks. No. I, I brought up I brought up I brought up the Bucks haven't beat the Saints, and it's not been close. Yeah, it's true. The only two the the the, the Saints have only 
they they've only beat they only have two wins against a team of over 500 this year it, it's against the bucks so let's it, put it this way if the nfc east wasn't fucking doing their best impersonation of jeff daniels on the toilet and dumb and dumber like every team in the NFC East, the NFC South would be considered probably the weakest division in the NFC. Because who do you got? You got two aging fucking Hall of Famers, and what else? You go out west, Cardinals at least have a young and up and coming quarterback. You know, Rams. The Rams have beaten the, the Rams have beaten the most teams over five hundred in the NFC. Believe that's that, what I'm saying. Th- you go out there, three. You, go out, you go out west, Rams, Seahawks, boom, contenders at least for playoff spots. No doubt. And the Cardinals, they're seven and six mm-hmm. with a second year quarterback who, by the way, if he was playing almost any place in the NFC East, would be being hailed as the second coming right now. It's because he plays for the fucking Cardinals that he's his, he, he's he's getting the Mike Trout treatment. You're not close enough to the to, to one of the major fucking coastal cities or major cities around here. That's it. I mean, seriously, dude, look at it. But it Packers, okay. Everybody else, crashingly, boringly, fucking just 500 almost. But you know what? It, 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 you can be tired of referring to this statistic. The Packers, 10 wins, only one of them against a team over 500. I want to see how the Packers are going to do in the playoffs. They might go out in the first round. The Packers have had a cake schedule. That's what I'm saying, man. The NFC, sitting here look, looking at the standings, looking at who the Buccaneers have played and won against, I'm like... Soft. I guess that I guess that win against the Packers was their signature win this season. Yeah, I mean that's that was you know a twenty eight point win. That's who who else that it would have been a competitive game did they take to the woodshed? Exactly. I mean, they beat the Chargers by a touchdown. Mm-hmm. They lost to the Bears. <clears throat> Did we really think the Raiders were contenders for the play for playoffs or or a deep run in the playoffs this year? I didn't. I mean, it, it, so uh, you know that twenty five point win over the over Vegas. Okay, and they barely beat the Giants. They won by two points. The Giants. Yeah, the fuck the, the Bucks are not as good as as we think they are. That's what I'm saying. On paper, that's nice. On paper, I should love a band like the Mars Volta. I can't stand them. <laughs> Somewhere, the, the the one listener of ours who's into sports and is a music nerd is like, <laughs> damn right, dude. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let it happen. All right. Hey, all you, know what, you know what? Here's the deal. I much, like Sunday. The, much like the, the night I got my first blow job and I had convinced myself it wasn't going to happen, I was happy to be wrong. I'll be happy to be wrong if the Bucks fucking go to the Super Bowl. I don't even need them to win. Shit, I ain't going to remember the end of the game anyways because I'm getting drunk as fuck. I just draw your attention, like I said, back to the Patriots with Tom Brady. He didn't have pristine records. He got beat by what-the-fuck teams. It, it, it happened, but he made it to the playoffs, and once he got there, game fucking on and moved. All right, well, let's get off the fucking bucks unless we just have to bring them up because I, I, get, I, get, to, I get to hit back Chris. I get to hit mute and sit back and listen to you two morons compare dick sizes over a team I never thought anyone would fucking die on a hill for. Go ahead, please. Oh, the Buffalo Bills, man. That's my dark horse Super Bowl pick this year. Right now they have beaten No, don't uh uh-uh. uh no, I don't call you on bullshit because you don't really bullshit a whole lot. You're soft selling it because you're like Buffalo's going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, right now. It's, it, yeah. Buffalo's going to win the Super Bowl. Happened today? Yeah. <laughs> they, they, have, they have beaten the most teams over 500 in the NFL. Nobody's talking about it. Five of those 10 victories are all against teams above 500. 200 bucks says they don't. $200? Says they don't. Well, where'd you get $200? Say, I'll do I don't need $200. Bank. I'm unemployed. $200 says they don't. I'm unemployed, son. I'll do like 50. Like, like 50 is a bet. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody is talking about the bills and why. Like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. How about we do this? How about we do this? Since, since you're so convinced that they're not going to win, Earl. And now that I've heard your evidence, it is convincing, Chris. I mean, that's the five of the ten wins. Teams over five hundred, five hundred or better. No other team can say that. That's actually pretty impressive. Like the Chiefs can, but their their percentage is lower. Because they have more win, like because it's, it's like 
basically they're batting five. They're, they're batting five hundred, right? If you look at it, batting average wise, five hundred. Half of those ten wins are against teams over five hundred. The Chiefs also have five, but it's five of twelve. So it's like it's they've they've had a softer schedule. I'm just saying for the bet, since both of y'all are so damn sure of yourselves, why don't we get everybody involved and. Whoever loses the bet buys the drinks on Super Bowl Sunday for everybody else on the fucking show. There you go. And by buy drinks, I'm talking about a fifth or a case. And no, no Johnny Blue or no crazy shit like that. <laughs> Since you're so damn sure of yourselves, let's do it. Let's put some let's put some let's let's put some pride on the line. And the other ones get, and whoever loses the bet, you gotta call the other one daddy on the air. <laughs> so what's the I'm bet in. though? I'm betting on the Bills. What are you? You're just betting on not the Bills. He's taking the field. I know that's kind of an uneven bet, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you got to call your shot there, fucking Babe Ruth. Kansas City. Kansas City is going to the bowl. I'm not saying Kansas City's not good. I'm just saying they've had a little easier road. Okay, and, Kansas City. And right going now, to the bowl. there you go. <laughs> your your horse is is Buffalo, and mine is Kansas City. You know, and I, and looking at Buffalo's. Road here, the 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 rest of the, the, the they could end up thirteen and three. They have uh, uh the Broncos, the Pats, and the Bills, or or, or the Bills and the Dolphins. So I mean, the, you know, I uh, I yeah, a Dolphins game could be a trap game, man. Especially if the Bills like they clinch. And the Dolphins are playing for a play-in spot. The Bills rest some of their starters. I mean, I know it's not going to – if they clinch, it doesn't matter. But I'm just saying, like, don't you want momentum? Because, I mean, if the Bills are going to do this, they're going to have to be like, what, the 2007 Giants, right? They're going to have to just build momentum and go in and just fucking dogpile and steamroll teams. And once you do that to one or you know one good team in the playoffs, you've got everybody's attention. You're not pulling the same shit again. So, I mean, I, that's just – to me, it's like, if you know these stats, they, their people know these stats. If they get too cocky with it, yeah, that's going to be a problem for them. And God knows the Bills don't know anything about getting cocky when, it, when, when, when the shit's on the line. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, well, Earl. You know, that, yeah. Real quick, real quick. Just, what was it, 95? We were sitting there, and we were like, Bill, what's, what's Bill stand for? Boy, I love losing Super Bowls. Oh, yeah. It's 25 years ago. I thought everybody had heard that. I'm talking to people our age. I said that shit in front of a coworker about six years ago who is our age, and he damn near fucking collapsed in, in half laughing. Like tears were coming down his face. He's like, where'd you get that? I'm like, motherfucker, how have you not heard that in 20 years? Like, that's what the Bills four in a row, man. Fucking <laughs> poor Jim Kelly, man. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like, Thurman Thomas fuck? is like, God damn it. Like, what else I got to do? Who Bruce I got to kill? Going, I quit. <laughs> I mean, Jim Kelly's like, he went to the doctor and he's like, so uh, how my blood test come back? Uh, well, Mr. Kelly, you have cancer. Okay, that doesn't bother me because I lost four Super Bowls yeah. in a row. In a okay, row. So. <laughs> in a row. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. But that's just, yeah, that's my argument for the bit there. They're a lot stronger than I think people are giving them credit for. They've had I agree a, with that. They've had a tough schedule, and they've risen to it. And, I mean, that you talk about that's playoff caliber teams, right? Teams 500 and above, that's who you're going to see in the playoffs. I mean, the, the Bills are like, all right, bring it. Let's go. I understand your point. I understand over 500 teams, yada, yada. Regular season don't mean dick. I know. I'm just like saying. The regular season. I agree. To get to the postseason. I agree because that's what I'm saying. Because down at the bottom of this list is Green Bay, ten and three, but one win against a 500 team. Like they're. To, I look at that. I say they're going to get fucking smoked in the playoffs. Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net. You heard that safe drivers get rewarded with Snapshot from Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw an ad for a vintage baseball cap, and now you find yourself checking the stats of that team's second baseman in 97, wondering why his stolen base total dropped after his rookie season. Wonder how much his rookie card is worth. Yes, they said it was easy to save money with Snapshot from Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California, North Carolina, or from all agents. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. 
Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspec. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. And now a game of Commercial Chicken, brought to you by Progressive, where we see how long Flo can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. Okay, so um, did you see that game the other day? <laughs> the refs, right? I mean, come on. They were totally out to get us. <laughs> that always happens to, uh, to our team. <clears throat> Time to switch to Progressive to save big... Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. ChristopherMedia.net. Sporty. Since we're talking about playoffs, let's move. Playoffs? Let's move, <laughs> let's, <clears throat> let's move from, the, from the, uh, the AFC East to the north there. So, <sighs> Another soft team, soft schedule. The Steelers. Steelers. I, I I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that because how many fucking years have we been like, well, this has got to be it, right? Like this has to be the this has to be the final curtain call on this this quarterback, this group. You know they're going to have to bow out of the contention for a couple years, do some retooling, rebuilding, restocking of the cupboard, and come back if they're going to do it at all. And it ain't happened yet, but yet. You're telling us it's only they're only eleven and two because they're, they're playing a bunch of fucking cream puffs. Yeah, only four wins against above five hundred. Oh boy, if we ever have to drive through Pittsburgh together, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> I picked you up. <laughs> you know, you were hitchhiking. That's not something. Because God forbid, if we get into a conversation, we're like, so, oh, Steelers, yeah, weakest team. I mean, fucking- seven of those wins were against nobody. A- as of right now, like, it's a, they're still, I'll, we still got to put 15, 16, put, and 17 in the books. I'll put your evidence with my theory, okay? The, the over 500 teams with my, the regular season don't mean shit. You take that combination, you put it in Tampa Bay. You get that record. You don't have to go 100% that 100% of the time in the regular season. Tom Brady at 43 knows that. He knows when he has to put the hammer down and win a game. He wins the games he's supposed to win. If it's a coin flip on the other ones, so what? Let it be a coin flip. Okay, and Ben Roethlisberger and Mike Tomlin don't because they've never been there? (laughs) Yeah. They're wet behind the ears. They're FNGs. I don't understand the comparison between the Steelers and, and, and Brady. And Brady understanding that you don't have to go 100 miles per hour during the season. Unfortunately, the Steelers don't have the equipment that Brady has. So Are you? Okay. I, I'm agreeing. I'm, try, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to <laughs> decipher your, your earlies, <laughs> this language you're speaking, because I've known you long enough or I think i got a handle on it. I think what you're trying to say... <laughs> Is that going eighteen and one taught Tom Brady winning every game during the regular season doesn't mean shit. Whereas when the Steelers were undefeated, they were feeling themselves a little too much. A little bit. And we're like, let's just put the hammer down and just roll through this motherfucker, not realizing that this is the NFL, which stands for not for long when you get cocky with your shit. True statement. Okay. See coming out looking like Roman Reigns. Show up, kick everybody's ass and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got to say, I, Tomlin, got to be in discussion for one of the best head coaches ever, right? Yeah. We have, to, we have to start putting him in there. 14 seasons never had a losing year. Never once. Yeah. He and and, and this, is a, this is a fucking franchise that since the merger has had three head coaches, all of them legends in Pittsburgh. Now, that's culture. I mean, dude. That's loyalty. <laughs> That is the ability to pick the diamond out of the rough and give it space to do what it needs to do. But let's be honest, that's a pretty short leash in Pittsburgh. If Tomlin would have got in there and started, you know, acting like, you know, <laughs> morning wig circa 2002, that would have been the end of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's why they've only had three since the merger, because they don't just go, 
Ooh, big name. Come here. Let me plug you in my system and see if it works. They sit down and vet their quarter, their coaches and extensively go through their game plan and what it means to be a Pittsburgh Steeler coach. Well, it, they've also seemed to have embraced the fact that football and coaching has changed to where the head coach doesn't need to be the complete package. He doesn't need to write all the X's and O's for every fucking play for offense, defense, special teams. He doesn't, he doesn't have to be the authoritarian and the father figure at the same time. He's just got to get everybody to buy into his system. The assistant coaches, they're the ones that do the dirty work. You were in ROTC. The head coach is the head drill instructor. The assistant coaches are, are you know, that's your senior drill instructor. The rest of them are your fucking assistant drill instructors. When the head drill instructor shows up, everybody knows senior drill instructor's here, bullshit time's over with. Be on your best. But you also don't fuck up in front of his assistants. You know what I'm saying? That's how NFL coaching seems to work these days. And, they see, and, and they, they've went with that because Tomlin is a no bullshit guy. And you can't tell me a bunch of athletes don't appreciate that. Did you hear his quote when they said, well, how did you, how did you give up that touchdown? He goes, because we sucked. Yeah. That was it. Next just question. Heard it. Respectable. We sucked on that play. And uh, that's why they scored. They didn't he and say that like, they deserved to lose to Washington the way they were playing? Nope, absolutely. Yes, he did. See, that's a, that's a man who holds the people around him to the same standard he holds himself. Or, excuse me, holds himself to the same standard he holds the people around him. Because he went out there and took that hit by saying that. It, it, not every coach could go out there and say, we sucked and not lose the team. In fact, a lot, Tony Dungy famously almost lost the coach, or, or lost the team as, as, as the Colts head coach the year they won the Super Bowl. Because halfway through the season, they were talking about, look at, look at your run defense and where it's ranked. And he was like, in an offhanded comment, it's Tony Dungy. I don't think the guy's ever publicly made a snarky, fucking passive-aggressive comment ever. So he was just, in, in an offhanded way, he goes, yeah, we, we, we played him kind of soft. Next thing you know, he goes, I wake up next day all over everything in Indianapolis. Dungy calls team soft. And he's like, I had to go in and fucking get the locker room back. Because half the guys, especially the defense, were ready to be like, burn this motherfucker right now. <laughs> what you mean, soft motherfucker? Come on, Pookie. Well, I remember that defense, too, though. <laughs> that defense was soft. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they stepped up in the, the fucking defensive Super Bowl. line. That defensive line was killer. But, I mean, you know, they stepped it up when, when they needed to step up. But, you know, it was like... Yeah, they were ranked, like, what, bottom fourth in run defense that season? And then, like, boom, like, stepped it up and were the best run defense in the playoffs. Like, I think they ran for, like, 12 yards, one of the teams they played against in the playoffs. And it was like, now who saw? That was the after games, you know, the NFL films recording it. That was their fucking, now who soft? <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, that's stuck in y'all's craw. Well, I'm just saying, though. On one side, you had Mathis. On the other side, you had Freeney. Where were you going to go? To hell. Uh-huh. With, a, he, with, a, he, broken, with a broken back. <laughs> <laughs> where were you going? Uh, about three inches into the ground. <laughs> well, I, I mean, because in today's game, you would have, you know, uh, Donald on one side and nobody on the other, or J.J. Watt on one side and nobody on the other, but... You could double team that person, but with those two defensive ends, you, mean you were team. fucked. The year the Lions had one of the best defensive defenses in the league. Their line was uh, sick. I know that. I know that line. I know that Fairly, line. Sue, Vanderbosch. Yep. Averill. Yeah. Well, since we're still in the AFC North, uh, what's your guys' opinion? Browns, Ravens. Who finishes second? Who? Now, see, this one's tricky, though. This one's real tricky because you have the Browns looking to prove a point that the Ravens have already proved. They are a contender. Man, how about this is the best Monday Night Football game I didn't watch, apparently? I, I, I know, right? Apparently right. that game was like uh, Rams' was like, Chiefs level of a couple years ago. No. Apparently, and this was, they compared it to this on, on, on 97-1. Miracle at the Meadowlands when Jumbo Elliott caught that fucking touchdown and the Jets came all the way back on the on – the, uh, the Dolphins, where like people were leaving at halftime, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, and then like turned around and we're like, "Can we come back in?" We were listening on the radio. They're making a comeback. 
they said it was like that type of exciting Monday Night Football game, and I'm just like the one I didn't watch. I heard Lamar came off. out from taking a shit and threw a touchdown. It was it was badass, but it depends on who you are. Because for me, I'm a defensive guy, and I'm like, is anybody going to stop anybody at all? Anybody at all? Yeah, if you had either of those defenses in fantasy football, yikes. You had negative points. But, yeah, uh, halfway through the fourth quarter, you know, you got Lamar Jackson going in with cramps and shit, and his backup's getting beat up and and trying to hold and trying to hold, and nah. And then finally Baker Mayfield play, plays up to his hype and scores the touchdown in their head, and they're like, yeah, baby, only one minute left. And his, the backup tries to get him down the field and then ends up going down and gets hurt. And as he's laying on the field hurt, the camera cuts to the locker room. Boom! Out comes Lamar Jackson running at full speed, grabs his helmet on his way to the field, <laughs> calls a play, does a juke and jive, and <laughs> throws a touchdown pass. And I'm like, no, he did not just do that. I, I look like Dwayne Johnson in Hobbs and Shaw. I'm like, damn, he is the black Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say this, man. Out of all the younger quarterbacks right now, I'm not saying he's the best because I personally think that's Mahomes, but he's my favorite. And the reason is that motherfucker gets up there and he knows what he's talking about. Like if you listen to his, his big his trust, press, oh yeah, <laughs> come see me, come see me in B more, baby. <laughs> But yeah, man, like he knows what he's talking about. Like he, uh, uh, there'll be reporters, you know, trying to fucking trip him up and ask him about a specific play, and he goes, "Yeah, that was second quarter, X amount of time on the clock. I read the defense this way. I saw this and this and then this and then blah 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 blah. So I I called an audible and I, yeah, and well, it obviously worked because we got the first down and then some. So I'm sorry. What was your question? You know, like don't try to fucking don't act like I'm a child up here who just. Lucked into this position, motherfucker. I'm a goddamn professional. With, with and, us three and he's old good. guys. <laughs> that boy good. With, with us three old guys, what we always talk about here is the second coming, blah, 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 of whoever. And, uh, yeah, I think he's definitely the second coming of Michael Vick. I'm not convinced that Vick, when he was younger, had that high of a football IQ. The one that I'm won't not. have his career derailed by <clears throat> dog fighting. That's but, the one. No, no. The reason I'm saying that is because Vic was an ungodly athlete. I think he became a better quarterback as he got more experience. Whereas Lamar Jackson come in and is a field general. I truly believe he sees that field like a coach sees the field, like a Tony Romo sees the field. He just has more more natural talent than Tony Romo, so he can actually win. But you know, side <laughs> <the> point. <laughs> who might who might have who might have shit on Tony Romo? He was hitting Je- Jessica. Simpson when she was actually hot. So, yeah. you know, yeah, buddy. Th- these he, boots made for walking, Jessica Simpson. You yeah, know, good Dukes of Hazard, Jessica Simpson. Dukes of Hazard, Daisy Dukes, yes. Yeah. But, no, I, I you know, I, I'm of two minds about the Browns. The Browns have a bunch of fucking, not a bunch, but they have enough outcasts and people with chips on their shoulders to where, now granted, I don't listen to a whole lot of national sports talk, so I can't tell you what they're saying on the national level, but on the local level, there's, it's the Lions. There's nothing to talk about. So they talk about every other fucking team that's worth talking about. Browns are hardly ever brought up. And when they are, they're not, people aren't swinging from their nuts, but people aren't calling them jack, you know, you know, dog shit either. Not anymore. They're, they're like, eh. They haven't beat anybody. It's another, it's another, they're in that bucket. Where's the one I'm getting? At? I haven't heard from him in he's injured. all ever. He, he's on IR. See what yeah, I'm saying? Will. He's seeing next season. Do you see what I'm saying, though, Earl? Yeah. One of their most high-profile players. Where the fuck is he? He's on IR. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you'd figure maybe that would fuel him a little bit. Like, oh, okay, keep underestimating us. We'll underestimate our ass right into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Just, just keep fucking looking past us to the game after us because we're worried about beating you today, you know? It seems like they're they, – they, they're, they, that would suit them. That would definitely suit Cleveland and their attitude. And it's the dog pound. Dude, I, no bullshit. You ever been to Cleveland on the day mm-hmm. that the Browns play in Cleveland? Mm-hmm. Don't get caught wearing any other fucking colors besides Cleveland Browns colors. Amber fucked up. 
and wore something that looked too close to Honolulu blue. And yeah, and we were down there. And oh yeah, the walk between where we were staying and the half mile walk to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which took us past the stadium as it was letting out for the game. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I looked at her at a certain point, and I'm like, I don't know bitch, you. I hope you can, bitch, I hope you can fight. <laughs> fight or what? I hope you can do something. I can't whip all these motherfuckers' asses. <laughs> some of these bitches, I don't know if I can whip some of these women's asses. This is a stranger. I was just walking by here, and she's just next to me. Sorry, honey. You'll... I don't know. It's just... I, it, I, I'm imagining that the typical your average Browns fan right now is like, yeah, that's right. Just keep disrespecting this man. We haven't gotten respect since before Bernie Kozar, so we don't give a fuck. Beat someone. Yeah, but do something. What have you done yeah. since Bernie Kozar? You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did Tim Couch light the world on fire? How about Brady <laughs> Quinn? Yeah. Like so. Well, yeah, you other, had thirty quarterbacks in ten years. Shut up. Any other teams? We want to we want to cover because we're we're kind of getting up against it here. Uh, I LAC. Yeah, I, they're you know what that the coach got to go. That's the problem there. They got the tools. They got the talent. Their coach Anthony Lynn's got to go. They're the Chargers. Bye bye. Go Matt Patricia can go there. <laughs> Ruin another place. That's really that's that that's my opinion on the Chargers. Uh, 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 and and Herbert, I mean, it's 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 echoing something you've said a million times on the show. Ice. It's uh, once you got film on the guy, all of a sudden, because uh, because it, it looks like Chase Young is going to maybe beat out Herbert for Rookie of the Year. Maybe, but yeah, I mean, that's 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 all I have to say on the Chargers. What about you? I still like the kid, dude. I'm not saying I don't like him. I'm just saying it's. He's come back to earth, and the coach blows. Oh, the coach definitely sucks. Um, yeah, it definitely uh, get film on him and make him tone it down a little bit. Yeah, you, know, you have. That's that, like you've, been, you've been beating that drum for pretty much since you first game. You actually watched him sit down and watch him play. Uh, I'll say this: Yeah, you you get film on a guy, you can make adjustments, but so can he. I, he. I have I've yet to see him play scared. Oh, for sure. Oh, he's definitely not scared. Boy has nuts the size that would come in a wheelbarrow. He is not rattled or breaking a sweat at all by being one of thirty two quarterbacks in the NFL in the world. That does not even phase him. He's yeah. like, eh. Yeah, I mean he's got the balls to be an NFL quarterback. No doubt. So I mean that to me, that gives him if he's that if he's like that and he has a level of I, I, I'm dedicated to improving myself, he can stay one step ahead of the film. It's just going to take a constant work on his end. It's going to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a career long process because I just don't think he's, I don't think he's one of those guys that just has raw natural ability and God given sight on the field to go out there and do some Mahomes shit, you know, no look passes and shit like he's fucking. Dude, Mahomes is a Magic freak. Johnson. Like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's a generational. He's he's one of those guys that like would in 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 you know when we're older than we are now, uh, he's going to be talked about with the reverence of like Tom Brady, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, those kind of guys. Like Mahomes is going to be one of yep. those kind of people. Absolutely. Like yeah, I mean, he's a freak and, of fucking nature. Yeah. yeah, and he's a disgusting all around athlete as well. That's what I'm saying. He's got. He could have played professional baseball or football. The Tigers drafted him for fuck's sake. And what he's got going for him is he's also not a dick. That's also going to go a long way too. He's an extremely humble guy. Yeah, that I won't open this can of worms now. It, it'll open itself down the road. Uh, I I agree with you. I just I. I think he's somewhere down the line in today's society. Someone's digging something up on the guy. And yes, it is possible to be too nice, especially if you worship the wrong religion. You know what I'm saying? You get you get, you get, a, you get a target put on your back. So I'm just saying, you know, think uh, Chris Pratt ah. and the, the ah. shit he's going through because yeah, because of him declaring himself a Christian. So I mean, like if he comes out and says that. The, oh yeah! In today's climate, it's it's attack on sight. It, he'll be a, 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 another divisive fucking athlete for no good reason. The Tebow effect, if you will. Ah. So, but anyways, you know, I think I've, I've really 
said everything I wanted to say about the teams I wanted to say them about. At least this week. Uh, did we miss anything huge? I don't think so. Just one quick tidbit. Number nine's coming back for uh, New Orleans. Drew Brees? Old, uh-huh. old and busted? Old and busted. Oh, he's way busted. Broken ribs, punctured lungs. Yeah, he's coming back. Well, I have a... Uh, if you usually stick around this long, now's the time we... we can, Used to always, now kind of half-ass do the picks. Well, I brought this up to Earl the other day, and I figured I'd bring it up to you. Now that betting is legal, sports betting is legal, maybe we need to modify how we do the picks and actually start taking like the spread into account instead mm-hmm. of just picking the outright winner, which is where the rubber is going to meet the road as to who really knows what. Yeah, that's true. Because right now it's a coin toss. It's a 50-50, you know. Um, I will say this. Before, if we do decide to go that route with the picks, listeners, do not take our advice and, and do these bets and get pissed if you li- if you lose. This is just our best guess for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> yeah. However, if you make thousands of dollars, definitely pay the piper. I'm just saying, we all have Am- <laughs> Amazon. We all have Amazon wish list. You know, you can find something on there to buy us. You know, it's it. <laughs> well, like we do on. Uh, well, it's like we do on uh, the on on the fantasy hack. Uh, we do bold predictions, and the rules we have for bold predictions is it can't really be like an even game. It's got to be, you got to pick against a crazy spread. Yeah. I'm just saying. It, it, and I mean, you know, maybe start it in when we get to the playoffs and have kind of a dry run through the playoffs and Super Bowl. And yeah, because I have no idea how to go about doing that. It's, it's going to be a complete learning from zero process for me. Did you get that, Chris? Yeah. No, it, it, it's it's. I know the breaking news. Oh, oh, that's not breaking news. ESPN needs to. Cla- that that's something happened. That's not breaking news. No, that's yeah. Breaking news is Irvin Magic Johnson has tested positive for HIV. Yeah, has attained the AIDS virus. <laughs> yeah, no, this is. Oh God, what well, we talked about now. We have to give the audience reference. No, it just says, Roger Goodell in favor of two-game preseason, but group including Robert Kraft, Jerry Jones, dismissed the idea. That's not news. That didn't cha- that nothing, nothing changes from the outcome of that headline. That's not news. But I, know, I know somewhere I'm getting okay boomered by somebody, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Rich, it's, I, I had sports betting explain to me like the lines and stuff, at least with, with football. Like it, it's it, it's all based on it, I understand it. it's it's based on how much you think they're gonna win by score wise essentially and putting it all together and all that crap. It's more the terminology that I don't have a handle on yeah. the nomenclature the shit that goes with you know oh okay I'll take the, uh I'll give the points and I'll take the team huh I don't know I'll take the points and and and, and the team huh. Give me the you Lions know, and the over. You know, see now that would make sense. Over under, right? Which is ultimately what mm-hmm. you're you, what you're calling. Minus well, is good, plus is bad. Much. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah. Anyways, yeah. Thirty to one fifty. And by the way, uh, the gauntlet has been thrown down by our at least one time champion of our final our fantasy football league here. My cousin Jess has said it is her mission. To meet me in the championship game this year, and to not just beat me, but decimate me, go dig up my dead grandmama and slap the bitch, and Damn. come on this air and talk shit to all three of us well, about she how she never did before. So yeah, great. Hold on. I believe when it I, happens. I, 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 yeah, I was like, yeah. And can I bet if you're actually going to come on air? She goes, no, no. I'm going to come on air and talk shit about all y'all about how. All these men couldn't beat little old woman who was picking them by. I just like the color of their uniforms, and I'm like, bullshit, bitch. You know you, but you put more into it than that. I'm, I'm like, don't try. You come on there and try that fucking aw shucks damsel bullshit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? That bitch knows what she's doing. Yeah, you she's Jess, like, football. I know you don't listen, yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you, if you do hear this part, fuck you, cunt. You, and uh, we're, we're family. I'm gonna say, I'll say it to your fucking face. Like, if you do hear if you do hear this part, I'm so sorry because I'm going to beat him today. 
I threw you a bone and let ice beat me. So go go get her. Go get her, Rich. Oh, this is what I said. I'm like, you're assuming a lot. You're assuming you're getting to the championships because, of course, I am. It's been me and you at the top all season. Like, and that could all change with who they rest. Yeah. Well, though, we, we stop on, we, we don't go into 17 strictly for that. Like, championships week 16, because, yeah, it's, it's week 17 is, you have, you have your championship of week 17, yeah, you're, you're going to run into a lot of that shit. Like, you know, uh, Mahomes has carried you all season, and then, you know, because the Chiefs are 50, or 14 and 1, he's not playing week 17, and then you're fucked. We, we avoid that. <laughs> Week 16 is the championship week. So you have to beat ice this week. Not going to happen. Your team is not great. Uh, God damn it. CMC, you son of a bitch. You China doll motherfucker. China doll. <laughs> David Johnson going on the COVID list. You son of a bitch. But anyway, so we're talking about fantasy football. That means we're done. Oh, uh, see, Rich dropped again. End without him if needed. So that's it. Over. Done. At Sporty Podcast on Twitter. Make sure you like us on Facebook. Find us there. Uh, you can also email Sporty Podcast, Chris, or I think it's just Sporty at ChrisForMedia.net uh, if you want to email us. Uh, make sure that you go to ChrisForMedia.net, click through the Amazon banner uh, while you're ordering all your stuff for Christmas. Helps us out. Doesn't make your stuff cost anything more. Uh, if you just want to drop all pretense and give us money. Click on the PayPal banner. You can uh, give us a couple bucks. You can subscribe if you wish to do so uh, by hitting the PayPal banner as well. And listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio app, uh, Spreaker.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, CrisperMedia.net. If it catches an RSS feed, we are there. Thank you for listening. Rich says bye, and we'll see you next week. Peace out, yo. And now a game of Commercial Chicken, brought to you by Progressive, where we see how long Flo can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. Okay, so, um, did you see that game the other day? (laughs) The refs, right? I mean, come on. They were totally out to get us. (laughs) That always happens to uh, to our team. Time to switch to Progressive to save big... Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in MassPat, and always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net.